That's a car sound. I'm Mally Moore. I thought it was a chainsaw for a second. <laughs> Uh, I'm Nathan Simmons, and I like to mix meats and make croquettes for the guys at the station. <laughs> that That's a euphemism. And I'm someone that makes you want to rip off your shirt, show grief your fucking tits, and Ugh. say, you know what? Let's go! Man, that's the best line in this fucking movie. <laughs> it certainly is not. And this, is, <laughs> this is the Spooky Lottings playlist, which is a podcast, for a better word, is good. For lack of a better yeah, word. I was about to say that <laughs> Man, you know what? This movie's broken us. <laughs> you try. You know, this, I'm, I'm done. I'm already done. I'm calling an audible. We're done. We're not doing this fucking episode. Okay. All right. The Silver Linings playlist ends. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Rest in peace, Oatmeal and Donald Pleasance. <laughs> uh, guys. <laughs> Bye, Corey. Oh, uh, here we are. Yeah. It's the end of Spooky Linings for the month. It's the end of Halloween. As we know it. As we know it. For now. What a bummer. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know where where to truly start i yeah, guess we can the beginning would be a good choice well mm. i was gonna say i guess we could also say that maybe we got the title wrong because i think this movie is actually called Corey begins <laughs> or halloween friends oh my Aww. god that's sweet jesus christ this fucking movie <laughs> i'm telling you you recut this movie there's a great rom-com in here totally yeah yeah, I got nothing, no, no rebuttal, no. Yeah, because I'm fucking right. <laughs> do we just do first thoughts? I mean, I really, like, I've been almost dreading, I've been both chomping at the bit to talk about this movie and dreading unpacking my feelings. Mm -hmm. Well, how about we do this? Because I know this is going to be a fairly popular episode because, mm. of course. We're very popular. Yes, we are so popular. <laughs> um, Halloween Ends came out uh, when this episode dropped about two weeks ago. If anything, we're like the Corey Cunningham of podcasts. <laughs> totally. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> This Halloween Ends came out about two weeks ago um, when everyone's hearing this. Yeah. And so we haven't had that much time to reflect on it because it just came out for us. Yeah. What, two days ago? Yeah. And I know people are probably going to want to, you know, it's October 31st. They're going to hear an episode about Halloween. So they're probably finding us for the first time. So if this is your first time tuning in, uh, thank you very much, listener, for for checking us out. We are the Silver Linings Playlist, and we are a podcast that tries to watch movies such as Halloween Ends. Mm. And it doesn't really fit our criteria. I'll go ahead and tell you. I don't <laughs> This movie doesn't technically qualify, but we're nah, doing it nope, anyway. Nope, it counts. <laughs> <laughs> Normally, what we do is we watch movies that don't have happily ever after endings, mm. and we try to find the good in those endings. You're going to tell me the end of this movie isn't what the fuck? Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's out there. Is that not the first thing you fucking <laughs> said when those credits started was just, what the fuck? In a different context, maybe. It counts this was yeah this is a very meta approach to yes. our show because i this movie ended and i went okay yeah <laughs> <laughs> pretty much and just uh, an exasperated sigh yeah so <laughs> i guess let's introduce our guest mm. um i don't even know how to refer to him at this point because i think i just found him living under a bridge <laughs> feeding uh you know would-be bystanders to the sewer drain mm -hmm. um, and he said his name was jt kelly but i can ne neither confirm nor deny because he was living in a tent and didn't have any id on him but let's just welcome him here anyway uh sir your name is as i can understand it jt kelly is that accurate <laughs> yeah okay yeah jonathan taylor <laughs> kelly i don't have a nice intro like like you guys did. I didn't prepare uh, one. Okay. Jamie T. Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> Jimothy Thompson Kelly. I think at this point, because he's been on so many episodes, uh, that now uh, the evil within our podcast mm. now transfers over to JT. And yeah. I think he tries to take over for a little while. So, JT, why don't you run us through this episode? <laughs> Life lives today. Life <laughs> lives today. Life. That's actually in this fucking movie. Okay. Is it? <laughs> it's spray painted on a wall at one point. Oh, my God. I missed that. There was also a dick spray painted. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if anybody caught that. Was, it, was that what was on the jar in the bar that Tommy puts a tip in? Didn't it say, like lives live today or something, something like that something stupid i don't know yeah who cares well i'll go ahead and say what we're all thinking we didn't like this movie mm -hmm. like i said it's still very fresh on our minds we haven't really had a chance to reflect on it too much because it's still in theaters still on peacock right now mm -hmm. and i will say i think we've how many times have we all seen it twice i've seen it twice twice Mal, have you had once? Technically twice. Okay. I've watched it three times. Ooh, buddy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Way to go. Well done, Jimothy. <laughs> so, yeah. So I watched it in theaters. Then I watched it the next day. Be like, well, I got the podcast. I need to watch it again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I had some friends over who never saw it last night. And I was like, all right, fuck it. Let's do this. Mm -hmm. It was a good time. Mally tried to watch it a second time, but then Tom Atkins got on the phone and made them turn off Peacock where he lives. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> um, yeah. 
Yeah, I know. I, I I've watched it twice. I will say, yeah, shout out, shout out my uh, Peacock account <laughs> for everyone rewatching this fucking movie. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Just holding down the fort, man. We really get some use out of that. <laughs> I was like, I am not paying four ninety nine for Peacock. Peacock's looking at your location. Is like, this man is traveling. He is in Los Angeles. <laughs> Motherfucker's in L.A. He's in Pensacola. What the fuck? <laughs> he moves faster than Corey Cunningham. <laughs> I will say, I noticed because I get an email every time someone signs in. Uh, I noticed that Nathan signed in on two different devices yeah. this morning. I did. <laughs> Just locking that down on your laptop and your mobile. Huh? <laughs> He's like, I really needed to go take a shower, but I don't want to miss this movie. <laughs> I will say it does play better the second time. I agree. That being said, still not good. Does it? It does. I applaud this movie for taking huge swings and they, they fucking went for and, it. And 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 throwing the formula out the window, but it, it is fumbled at every the, yeah. Okay, the best metaphor I can come up with this movie is the scene in the other guys <laughs> <laughs> where they just they're just like Aim for the bushes. <laughs> oh, yes. That is the best way I can describe this movie. Yeah. yeah, I would. I just think. Okay, first of all, let's nail this down. Is this considered a trilogy or a tetralogy? Because technically it's four films, uh, right? Did you just make up a word? He no, did. that's, that's did. the four. Yeah. That's a trilogy with four movies in it. So not a trilogy. I learned that because I remember buying the Alien Quadrilogy mm -hmm. and someone telling me that's not a real fucking word. It's not. It's not. <laughs> but what I'm trying to refer to this this whole new you know timeline. Yeah. I don't know if I call it a trilogy or not. I guess it's technically a tetralogy. So I would say Halloween and then the Hallow Green trilogy. <laughs> Sure enough. I like that. How long you had that one ready? Yeah, I just, he was cooking. Yeah. That one was cooking. You had that loaded. <laughs> Brady's bunch. I, I, think, I think this movie would work if it was a standalone. Mm. If it was, if this was not literally the final film in your quote unquote, the official timeline, yes. the new timeline, Lori's story coming to an end right. for the third time. Right. I, this would work so much better if it was just like a standalone thing. Or like a Halloween part or Halloween ends part one. Sure. And they kind of split it up or something. <laughs> Sure. Yeah. The showdown between Laurie and Michael takes up three minutes of screen time. Ugh. But what a three minutes, though. What a, what a three minutes. <laughs> and is so tacked on to the rest of yes. this movie. It is It is an afterthought. Yeah. It is 100% an afterthought. Toward, towards the end of the episode, after we talked about the movie, I do have, I was I was telling Nathan, I was laying in bed last night. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you know. And then I was like, tell me more. Uh, <laughs> thinking about Corey. <laughs> and I was thinking about Corey and mm -hmm. Michael and Laurie and Alice and just all the characters. Sure. I, f I rewrote this whole trilogy in my head laying in okay. bed last night. Oh my night, gosh, okay. To a point where I think it can work, but that's for the end of the episode. Yeah. Can I ask, does it work better if you play these movies backwards? It's ends, then kills, then the 2018 one? Because I think that makes way more sense than what uh -huh. they're doing here. No. Okay. Well, that that's not what I had in mind. Fair enough. Yeah. I, I think this works, like I said, as a standalone, but yeah, Michael's an afterthought in this movie. Lori is almost an afterthought as well. I think Michael has two confirmed kills in a Halloween movie, which yes. has got to be a new low. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's pretty rough. Well, is it two? I guess it's technically three because he kills Corey at the end. Yeah, yeah. three. That's got to be a new low. That Jesus boy. Uh, How many does he kill in the original? At least four. four. Yeah. Mm. And not did counting you count that the dog? dog? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did you count the mechanic? I do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there's four. Yeah. Yeah, okay. At least four, yeah. I think that more than anything else, this is indicative of each of these movies having three to four credited screenwriters. Boy. And, and the we we keep we keep hearing these stories from David Gordon Green about how, you know, oh well, we're still tweaking the ending up till release. And that's been the case with each of these to yeah. the point where like early screenings of these movies are significantly different from what ends up on screen. Mm -hmm. And I, I just it, it it just it's so bizarre to me whenever we get into the opening of this movie, how it keeps reimagining what Michael's impact on Haddonfield was yep. yeah. and how people view him and Laurie Strode will sometimes change over the course of a day. Yeah, I will say the big the intro scene of this movie. Fuck it, I was in great. Oh, intro. Man. I was in immediately the open. I, I loved it. I, I was in the second time. The first time I'm like, uh -huh. oh, when they do the close up on him, I'm like, oh, we're going to have a fun time. And I was like, I swear to God, <sighs> if they're going down end of Halloween four route with this unknown character already. Oh, sure. I was like, I swear to fucking God, because that was the thing. I think we talked about this briefly, maybe on Halloween kill, uh -huh. not Halloween kills on uh, another episode where we talked about this trailer. But yeah, Mally and I had this at the same 
point, like we noticed in, this, in the first trailer that it dropped, Michael suddenly got his fingers back yep. and were like, copycat killer. Mm -hmm. And I thought that's where we were going, and I was already like not on board right. immediately. So after I knew it was coming, the Sega time, it does play much better. Yeah. Like I said, a lot of scenes like that in this movie play so much better when you know where it's going. Well, but ooh. to be fair, when it starts doing the opening titles straight out of Halloween three, we should have <laughs> yeah. known Michael Myers was barely in this movie. That's yeah, that's very actually a good point. point. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I fucking love that they continued that trend. Yeah. Oh, 20, me too. 2018 used the original font. Mm -hmm. Yep. Kills used the Halloween two font. And then they did Season of the Witch font. And I was like, fuck, yeah, it's like yeah. this is rad it's not bad i can't wait till stonehenge shoots a laser in this movie <laughs> if fucking only if you would have told me that was the third act of this movie originally before they tacked on this fight between michael and Lori, i, I kind of would have believed you yeah, like she she throws stonehenge at him instead of a refrigerator yeah it's it's now confirmed michael is supernatural right because uh, yeah how, well well i mean how much does this stuff go how, do, how does the <laughs> evil go between him to Corey? He, he also <laughs> stabs a guy and then starts shaking like he just got his juice <laughs> he has the piss shivers <laughs> he, he, just got he the his pants. Oh he acts like blade when he gets his serum guys i pulled the clip don't worry about it hold on here it is thank you <laughs> <laughs> he gets the piss shiver. Sure. <laughs> what is this? I will say. No, no. Mally, Mally, no, you can't. Credit for this, like, the one thing I did not expect to see in uh -huh. this movie. Was a love scene? <laughs> was Michael Myers coming so, yes. so, so hard. Michael yeah. looked, right? <laughs> We've been asking that question forever. I think we know. Yeah. <laughs> he, he kills that guy handmaid's tale style mm -hmm. like Corey holds him in his lap that is a love scene yeah, like, yeah. i'm not making a joke like that is how it is shot like we always joke about like oh which kind of peanut butter peanut butter does this michael <laughs> eat this no he doesn't eat it he uses it as lubrication yeah. absolutely yeah. i can't fucking breathe <laughs> oh, and i do as as dumb as the oh little sounds like sound, sounds like jimothy's using some peanut butter right Jimothy, now you started no. the peanut butter trend don't don't back out now no, this was... is the final movie the little shiver <laughs> is silly, but I do love how he like stands up straight at the end of that scene. That's that's kind no. of a nice, but but it also is just like so many questions. Is this yeah. what's like explain yourself? <laughs> what just happened? Well, he took that guy's quick in it. Yeah. Michael's a Highlander. <laughs> there's, there's so many things that I'm like, is this what's supposed to be happening right now? And mm -hmm. none of those questions ever get answered. No, that's one of my biggest uh, complaints about it is like if you're gonna go into that supernatural thing, mm -hmm. lean fucking into it. Oh my god, like, when just do it. When it panned over to the lady hanging in the first scene, mm -hmm. I thought it was the man in black. <laughs> 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 we'll get there when we get there. But I got a lot of questions about yeah. Michael in general in this movie. Totally. But I guess I we all kind of rated this pretty low. I don't think any one of us put it above a five out of ten. Mm -hmm. Mal, I think you were the most generous with a four. Yeah, I think mine was a four. Yeah. I think for me it went up to a three. And I and I would I would like to officially change that to a four point three. Okay. okay. <laughs> That's an arbitrary number, but sure, we'll go with four point three. Because of Mally's head cannon, because he reordered these in his sleep last night. And he's like, <laughs> now that makes it I'll give it point three extra. Oh no. After my rewrites, this is a solid five. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's <Fair>. rough. <laughs> uh I don't want to go through every single one of these movies but mm -hmm. is this top half bottom half where do you guys stand oh this is this is bottom half this is bottom yeah. half for me too i mean when i left the theater i texted my buddy david and said this is the worst halloween movie and it's not even close i i would bring it up in the ranking now that i've rewatched it yeah. but yeah just my initial reaction was so visceral yeah same no it's it's uh it's still better than Resurrection to me. And I'm curious to see if this is one of those that, like, I, I reappraise, like, in, in future viewings. Yeah. Well, let's, I mean, do we want to talk about the current Rotten Tomatoes score? Yeah. yeah. As of right now, the way I saw it, it was 41%. Yeah. Oh, it's dropped since then. I, uh, no, oh, it, no, no, it has, no, it hasn't. Oh, it's at 41 right I, now? Oh, okay. I, check, I screenshotted it an hour ago, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I checked, like, an hour ago. Which... Is still higher than Halloween 2. Sure. Well, I, <laughs> what is your problem with Halloween 2? <laughs> I know, right? I like Halloween 2. Belly Me does too. not like it. And that's fine. You don't have to like it. But I, I've seen a lot of people that are jumping at the bit to defend this movie that are like, oh, this is going to be one of those ones that 10 years down the road. Have you been on Reddit tonight? Oh, boy. <laughs> well, Twitter, for some reason, is ablaze that this movie's great. Mm -hmm. Oh, the Halloween movie subreddit is just in a civil war right now. <laughs> Well, 
it, everyone's like, this is going to be one of those ones that you re- reevaluate 10 years down the road and it's going to be a good movie. And I'm like, but it's not now. And it's, <laughs> it, this right. is a bad movie. It's a bad movie right now. I will say in their defense, <laughs> Halloween 3 yeah. was not considered good when it came out. Sure. But I fucking love Halloween 3 now. But Halloween 3 has the benefit of being literally unrelated to anything else right. like this is part of both a trilogy and a tetralogy now like this is it's supposed to be the definitive end like there's a reason Corey is not really in any of these trailers right. and it's they kept the plot very under wraps based on these trailers and there's a reason for that well all of the footage from the halloween kills trailer was was like Lori saying this is our final showdown yep. and the log line on peacock when it came out was Lori strode finally takes the fight to michael myers yeah i mean uh, there's a there's a difference between like hiding things and lying and oh marketing. well we're gonna watch the trailer here in a minute and i pulled specifically the second one mm-hmm. which is a bag of lies <laughs> but uh that first trailer yeah there's a reason why they only showed you uh i don't know the last 10 minutes of the movie sure yeah in hindsight i'm like of course they did yeah because how would that be the start of the movie <laughs> or the middle so we needed way more paper airplanes in that trailer oh my god oh uh, we got so much to talk about all right well let's Let's not wait around any longer. Let's get into it. Terry, no further. Terry, no further. (laughs) Corey, no further. (laughs) That's my, uh, that's my bond name, by the way. Terry, no further. (laughs) (laughs) That's really good. Um, All right. So Halloween did this year, 2022. The director is David Gordon Green, who Mm. has directed all of these new Halloween movies uh, since 2018. Uh, The movie stars, (laughs) the last name here, I think is so funny, but we'll get there. Mm -hmm. Jamie Lee Curtis, Annie Matichek, Will Patton, Kyle Richards, James Jude Courtney, Rowan Campbell, and Omar J. Dorsey. (laughs) For his one line of dialogue. I think it's hilarious. Did he have a line? Yeah, he goes, he goes, it is tonight. Wait, which character is that? That's the sheriff. sheriff. Oh. That's the fucking sheriff. That we kept waiting to matter in these movies. Yeah. Oh, we're going to talk about all the cameos at the end of this movie. Oh, you know my favorite. (laughs) The return of the king. Oh, my God. (laughs) The prodigal son returned. Uh, The budget was $20 and as of this recording, which, again, has only been two days Mm -hmm. uh, since its release, is $58 million worldwide. Yeah, number one at the box office currently. Mm -hmm. And as Mally uh, pointed out, currently, right now, it's at 41% on Rotten Tomatoes. Which, for all you people that don't fuck with math, is 11% higher than Halloween 2. (laughs) (laughs) The night is still young. This movie is very new. It could certainly drop a lot further. (laughs) Is that lower than Halloween Kills? Oh, that tomato score? Yeah. I don't think it is. It is? I think. When I looked the other day, it wasn't. But then again, I think it was at like 60%. I don't remember what Kills was. I just know Kills was also higher than 2. But that was was such a steep drop, though. Because like Thursday, it was at like a 60-something percent right yes when it first came out it was like 60 something and then kept just steadily dropping uh halloween kills I'm gonna, oh, what are you halloweenville <laughs> <laughs> there we go <laughs> okay now check hubie halloween <laughs> uh oh 39 percent it's close boys okay yeah. Two percent difference. We'll say the audience score for this movie much lower. Yeah. How is it? <laughs> yeah, the audience score is like fifty. Yeah, fifty-seven audience for Halloween Kills. Fifty-seven for Ends. Wow, boy, guys. By the way, Cat Daddy's one hundred percent. Oh my god, Good. Maybe we should have watched that instead. <laughs> at last. <laughs> Wait, there's also a movie called Bitch Ass. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> that is sitting at a sixty-five. <laughs> Why aren't we doing that episode? For real, that's pretty solid. Okay. So, I, again, I know we're all ready to talk about it. One uh-huh. last time, let's watch uh, the trailer. And again, I pulled the second trailer mm-hmm. specifically because, like I said, I noticed there's a lot of lies in this trailer. And you didn't watch this trailer until after the movie, right? Not until afterwards. And then I saw all the, the bullshit. That I'm like, oh, I would have been so pissed <laughs> if I saw this trailer. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Here we go. It's been four years. Hey, yeah, Georgie. For real. <laughs> I actually really love that sewer set design. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, this is the part of the movie that's Maniac Cop 2. Yes. Okay, we'll talk about that after the trip. <laughs> Slash Labyrinth, because there's a rock on the wall that looks like Michael's face. Yeah. I didn't understand that, but we'll get there. <laughs> Still confused. Hmm. <laughs> I saw him watching me. Why, number one. Yeah. Which I get. That's fine. That one I am okay with. They pulled an Infinity War. <laughs> yeah, they sure did. Because he is coming. But this time, 
something feels different. He's more dangerous. Lie number two incoming. Yep. Wow. Yeah. Different death. Yep. This played after I watched it on Peacock last night, and I was like, none of this just happened. <laughs> <laughs> He killed my daughter, but tonight I will kill him. Come and get me. Yeah, that line's not in the movie. Nope. nope. She didn't unlock the door like that, did she? No. None of this is in the movie. Yeah, I would have been pissed if I saw that part. Yep. That didn't happen? Nope. I'm so what? angry with all the nostalgia porn in this movie, too. Nuts. Maybe the only way he can die is if I The die one shot of the sheriff they could use <laughs> right there. <laughs> Star of the no. film. Best death in the movie, the DJ. I disagree with you, but we'll talk about it. Okay. Bing, bong, bong, bing. Yeah, just uh, Halloween lies, apparently. <laughs> so do it. And again, I'm okay with some of the lies, because I get it. You got to keep some of the stuff a secret. Sure. But lot, lots of it in that, that trailer. Okay, I'm going to open the floodgates. I, I know people have got some stuff they want to talk about. So uh, I will say, I don't know, like, as far as, like, the actual, sh like, some of the lines. I mean, obviously, like, you know, mm -hmm. fucking DC, you work in trailers. I know, I know. You, you know you cut up those lines. I sure. I, well, the Franken edits, again, I don't mind those. I, I'm going to I'm gonna chalk up a lot of the shots, like, the different death for the doctor and, like, the shot of him getting up behind Lori. Like, that's just reshoots and sure. scenes they end up cutting. Yep. That's that's what he's talking about. He said, we're tweaking everything. Yeah. Like, okay, dude. <laughs> well, there's a whole thing where Allison shuts the door, sees her reflects and turns around and screams. Like, yep. if I if I recall, the only time like Allison and Michael come face to face when she goes back in. Breaks, breaks his, his arm. arm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's the only shot that I'm actually confused about. I'm like, well, when, like, when, what? Yeah. yeah. Huh? So- uh, God damn. Okay, well, well, that's all for the end. We'll get to when we get there. Because I gotta say, they they did Allison dirty in this yeah. movie. Very, very dirty. Poor, one of my notes is poor Allison. But <laughs> she played it really well to me. Oh, no. She is, like, Andy is amazing. She yeah, did great. great for what she had to do. <laughs> Underused. By and large, I think the acting in this movie is pretty great yeah, from, yeah. from most of the principal players. And, like, there's... Like, it's not their fault that yeah. this is a mess. Honestly, acting-wise, the only one I re have real problems with is Corey's mom. God, uh, yeah. She's in a different She's in a different movie. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. She's in a Lifetime movie for some reason. She's in a Tennessee Williams play. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, it was laid pretty thick. She's a Stephen King mother. There you go. Yeah, like... Uh, like I'm like, what is like every time we cut to her, I'm like, what is the what the fuck is going on with fucking dollar store Barbara Streisand? Like, yeah, I, I don't understand that whole dynamic at all. With her Joan Crawford makeup. Yeah. I adored Ronald though, the stepdad. Oh, he was great. <laughs> he was so cool. The actor playing Corey, I think, is great. Fantastic. I think so too. Rowan Campbell. I I think he does so much heavy lifting in this movie. Yes. Uh, where again, Lori should be doing it, or Andy, you know, Andy Matichek. But yeah, I. I just don't, I don't like, this feels so much more like a Rob Zombie Halloween than all the other ones David Gordon Green's done. Oh, totally. This has, the, he's got the same kind of vibes with like the, the bullies and everything. And then, I don't know. I just the didn't look in high schoolers yeah. and he's like 25 years old. I didn't like it. <laughs> I, ap I appreciate them for trying to flip the script mm -hmm. and make the band geeks. Oh yeah. The bullies, but not, no, it doesn't <laughs> fucking work. But there's sure. 16 year olds bullying a 24 year old. It don't fucking work. That shit's not happening. <laughs> well, I was, I was also just baffled by the lead bully being from Brooklyn yep. and one of the other ones being from Diant. Yep. <laughs> oh, I wrote down this diet, diet word fucking bully. <laughs> Hold on here. Uh, and yeah, I just, I don't know. We'll get there. But my first real note yeah. is how big is this house? Right. Because it's like four stories. And I don't know why, but I always assumed Hannafield was kind of like a very middle of the road, like northwestern town. Well, that's why it was shocking to see Jeremy's mom at the bar later, because I was like, aren't you a billionaire? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but there's one bar in Haddonfield. Yeah. yeah, I guess so. I, that's true. <laughs> this house is enormous. It's massive. What the I fuck? mean, I will say my hometown is a bunch of white 
trash people, mm-hmm. but there's also some fucking mansions. McMansions, yeah. Yes. I'm like, what the fuck does she do in Haddonfield that makes that much money? Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> I don't know. I, this house, when they showed the stairs, I, I kind of got vertigo just watched it on TV. I was like, Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ. Yeah. The opening line is, Corey, you're a lifesaver. Because mm-hmm. it's ironic, oh, right? Yeah, that's good screenwriting, guys, right there. Right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> because he killed the kid. Yeah, credit where credit's due. They murdered this child immediately. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. okay. Yo, but I could not help but to laugh just a little bit. Oh, I laughed so hard. Oh, my God. The first thing I did when the credits started rolling was get out my phone and see how long into Face Off it was when the kid died to see if this movie beat it. <laughs> if it lines up. It doesn't. It doesn't, it doesn't. beat it. Oh, okay. Face Off killed the kid faster, but I mean, damn, this is a, it's a close number two. Before we talk about the actual death of this kid, mm-hmm. I, I, I fucking was so happy when this kid died. Fuck this kid. <laughs> Why did he go from such a, like, he was cool as shit and it's then- baffling, right? Because the parents were there. He fucking snapped and just went to being a complete asshole. But he still liked the paper airplanes. Well, they tried to make this kid the new Julian. Yeah. Like, that's what they were trying to do. They were like, let's give him a f- some funny lines to mm-hmm. say, but it's not funny. It's just mean. Well, like, you know, and it's also really funny because, like, they watched the thing from another world in the first Halloween, yeah. and then this one, they're watching John Carpenter's thing. <gasps> And that's like called a callback, and it's really smart. Synergy. <laughs> Synergy. That's good. Hey, personally, I love that because I saw this on Thursday night, and then I went to a screening of the thing on Saturday. Oh, so yeah. it worked. It was, like a, it was like a little tease for me. All it did for me was be just tell me, man, you could be watching such a better movie right now. You could be watching a better movie. Yeah. Or just eating a brownie and drinking Publix chocolate milk oh, well, that, instead okay. of watching this. That's how you know he's not a complete psycho. He's not just pulling out white milk out of his fridge. <laughs> At least he's got some flavor. To it. <laughs> that's true. But this kid loves milk. I don't know if you guys noticed. There's he so does. much milk buying. Yeah. What's- <laughs> and then that one bully has a lot. He's like, oh, you're drinking milk. I, I like, like milk, milk too. too. And I'm like, hey, man, can <laughs> you buy us some beer? Kind of <laughs> you're drinking a little milk. <laughs> uh, about a big, you're drinking some milk, dude. <laughs> hey, chocolate soldier. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. What's the brand? <laughs> no, this, this, this kid sucks. And the thing that worked with Julian is there was a rapport between him mm-hmm. and I can't remember the other babysitter's name. Yeah. Corey is, is an empty blank slate at the beginning of this movie. Sure. And that's fine. But then it's just this kid being a bully. Yeah, yeah he's just being an honest. asshole. The kid deserved to die. I don't know what you want me to say. <laughs> I agreed. Trust me, agreed. I didn't want to say it. Leave it to Melly. Melly would no, drop no, it. No, no, that kid deserved to die. He calls him an ugly ass boy babysitter. Yeah. And then on top of that, like he does the whole thing where like the fucking knife is missing. So this kid's playing a prank, but takes mm-hmm. a. F- a fucking kitchen knife sure. runs around the house. Well, it, this doesn't make sense because the mom makes it very explicitly clear. This kid is afraid of Michael Myers. It's mm-hmm. only been one year since the last movie. And he even says he wets the bed. No, I didn't. she said he's afraid of the dark. Does she? She said, yeah. you know, last year with all the Michael Myers stuff, he's right. afraid of. The- OK, fair enough. You're right. But. It, this movie also likes to make a lot of assumptions about how different people perceive Michael Myers yes. <laughs> without ever actually explaining it. Yes. But no, th- this is one year after all that shit. Sure. I'd be playing it cool, too. Yeah. Like, especially if nobody was found. I don't even know if I'd want to go out on Halloween night, dude. I, yeah. I don't know. I know. I will say a lot of people on Reddit were like, there's no fucking way they'd still be doing Halloween after that happened. I'm like, uh, uh bullshit. Yeah. Like, maybe. No, no, dude, dude. Uh, no, no. Listen, Columbine happened in April. Uh huh. They were back in like they went to school in August. No fucking problem. They're not going to cancel Halloween. That, I guess that's fair. We're happy. I- having Coachella during a pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> I, guess, I guess I'm just thinking Michael murdered their whole fire department. I don't know. Maybe they're all like, guys, we got to put a little bit of a stuff. The entire stuff. fire department. Oh, no. They banned matches. Oh, yeah, they fair. banned fires. <laughs> they banned arson. Nobody could commit f- arson. <laughs> no one could commit <laughs> fire. Arson, arson is officially illegal in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, thanks, Michael. I was Robert De Niro and Cape Fear laughing at this kid <laughs> bouncing off of this floor. Oh, my God. He Holy shit. Bounce. <laughs> yeah. God. <laughs> when you hear the kid screaming as he's falling and then bouncing, he bounced like Chef Chelios and Crank off the street. <laughs> I gotta say. Holy shit. This kid. <laughs> he does. I loved the fucking like fall, like the kid falling joke. And just the mom's like, what was that? Yeah. <laughs> I really, I, 
last night when we were all watching it, I was like, I wish he would have fell through the floor and into the basement. Oh, oh my god. Just, <laughs> like a cartoon a sized hole, yeah. like a big fucking body Nandor. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 par- the parents look down in the hole, the kid looks up all crippled, just like yeah. Thanos is coming. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Corey is coming. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Michael is coming. <laughs> Michael is coming in about an hour and 20 minutes. I can't be ever afraid of a guy named Corey. Yeah. And I get the alliteration, it's not helping. Corey Cunningham. Well, and also they name him after Arnie Cunningham yeah. from Christine, which this movie is a remake it's of. It's trying so hard. Yeah, no, this is literally, literally Christine. Oh, no, no. Uh, Nathan had a good point. You uh, brought up Maniac Cop 2 oh, earlier, that too, which yes. we talked about this right after the movie, and you said David Gordon Green is a big, apparently a big fan of that movie. And I went and watched both Maniac Cops because I've never seen them. And you are you so absolute right. absolute madman. You are so right. Dude, this is just the plot of Maniac Maniac uh, Cop 2. I don't know if you guys have seen it. Yeah, starring Bud from Halloween 2. Yes. <laughs> well, the the fake, the because, fa- you know, all movies create like a fake production company uh-huh. to mm-hmm. work under. The production company's name for this was Nightblade 3 Productions. Hell yeah. <laughs> Which is fucking awesome, honestly. They should have went with Cordell Productions. <laughs> and then I think the actual like working title when they were shooting was Cave Dweller. Mm. Well, that I like. Yeah. I don't I don't remember what Kills was, but uh-huh. the 2018 Halloween had the coolest code name ever, which was Uncle Orange. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's pretty, pretty cool. sick, though. <laughs> that's fucking sick. Yeah, I just I, I this opening scene works so much better the second time when I because I don't know. Do we consider it a copycat killer? I guess we do because he does try to wear Michael's mask. Yeah. He says, he says, give me that shit. God, we're, that's the <laughs> worst scene of the movie. God. We, yep. God. <laughs> Nathan. <laughs> oh, it, it, it's not the fact that he overpowers Michael. Like, I can almost buy that. It's you that can. moments before he gets beat up by a bunch of teenagers. Yes! It's also shot like a comedy. It yeah. is! Like, that scene is is hilarious. They should have yakety sex. It's like in Scooby-Doo where they, like, go through one door and come out the other door. And <laughs> I was gonna say, we should do some Scooby-Doo shit. That's how this was shot. Yes! In that tube. Oh. You're nothing but an old man in a Halloween mask. Give me that. God. But then this old man just fucking bodied you right when you walked in here. Just yeah. threw him across the fucking sewer. That's the thing. Is, is, is Michael supernaturally strong or is he a weak, frail, old 60-year-old man? Like, you can't have it both ways. He's weak and he's weak until he kills someone and then he gets his juice. Yeah! <laughs> I, I don't know that that's yeah it doesn't play better the second time it certainly didn't play better on the first watch but it is so goofy and then of course we get the classic Michael sit up mm-hmm. at the end of that scene sure but even that's goofy because it like he does it just so quickly he's like yes yeah. <laughs> <I'm up." laughs> and Corey does it too I don't know yeah. if you guys noticed but he does it Corey does do it I, and it was pretty fucking funny <laughs> Dustin yeah I feel like so much of this movie was shot with David Gordon Green thinking I don't know if you guys noticed this was like yes like i fucking know i know you <laughs> saw halloween yeah like i get it oh well this whole movie like this okay let's let's talk about it this opening narration i think is fucking useless i think <sighs> yeah it's all nostalgia porn it doesn't do anything right. like i get it laurie's writing the, a book mm-hmm. doing her sex in the city thing <laughs> and you we could just see a few words on the laptop i don't need her recapping the f- movies i've already seen <laughs> this book is going to be terrible oh it's awful all of her narration her narration is done in sentence fragments yes. so like literally you're telling me you've got a paragraph that's just you know love or death suicide or cherry blossoms you're writing about something that you haven't explained to the reader Mm-mm. and like Mm-mm. it's just gonna be a bunch of like three word sentences and that's your book yeah <laughs> it's also how they were writing this movie <laughs> <laughs> well the finale of she Hawk yeah. was the same day as this. Uh-huh. And there's a joke. I don't want to spoil anything, but there's a joke in that show where they start to do a narration yeah, and yeah. literally like the character breaks the fourth wall. It's like, no, we're not doing a fucking narrator. Yeah, like yeah. we're not going to be that lazy. Not cutesy wrap up. Yeah. yeah. And that's all I could think about while watching this. I'm like, they're really going to be that fucking lazy. All right. Well, got it. The, the, the evolution of Laurie Strode and Haddonfield's relationship to Michael Myers makes no sense, especially when you take it as a trilogy, right? So, like, 
2018, Lori is treated like she's a lunatic because she's been afraid of Michael coming back for 40 years. Mm -hmm. In Kills, which takes place the same night, same night, Tommy Doyle has to give a speech at the open mic night to remind people about Michael Myers to the point where some there's lines of dialogue where someone's like, wow, I've lived in the area my whole life and I've never heard about this. Oh, that's all anyone could talk about in that town if it ever happened. Right. And by the end of that movie, everyone's like, Michael's infected us for 40 years. <laughs> yeah. At the start of this movie, one year later, they're letting kids roam around free on Halloween night. Yep. And, but also, Michael scared everyone so bad that now people commit suicide every Halloween. <laughs> oh my God. This little montage. I didn't understand that. Uh, that was uh, the one kid's mom. Yeah. It was uh, the, the the little chubby kid from the first movie that gets oh. the, the fence death. Oscar? Oh, right. That was his mom. Yeah. yeah. That's, it. that's his mom. Yeah. That kills herself because yep. she's he's wearing his costume. That's right. Holy cow. I didn't even put that together. Yeah, mm-hmm. me neither. Uh, but now Lori, who has spent four decades uh, preparing herself for just this event, who has been traumatized by Michael Myers, decides after her daughter is murdered by Michael, mm-hmm. actually, I fuck with Halloween now. Yes! I'm going to move to the center of town, buy decorations. I'm going to make pies because I fucking love Halloween. <laughs> That's why I was saying I think these movies are in reverse. Right. If this is the first one we get out of the gate Mm -hmm. after the original, and it's like, look, Michael was a huge impact on my life, but after a certain amount of time of him being locked up, I just kind of got over it. Like, I got over my trauma. And then it, ha- it all the shit happens with a new kid and everything. Oh, no, it's starting up again. Then you go into Halloween Kills. I'm like, all right, well, we got Corey, but Michael's still here. We got to get rid of him. Evil dies tonight, whatever. Yeah. And then you roll into the first movie and she actually- Where she's built the compound yeah, like, and- Yeah. Yeah. Burns him alive. So instead of a recovery, it's her descent into- Alcoholism and- Yes. Yeah. Because her daughter was murdered and her granddaughter's boyfriend tried to take up the mantle right. and that drives her to drinking. Like, it would work. I feel like you could recut this trilogy into something that works. I do. But- as it exists right now. Get Topher Grace on the phone. Oh, boy. <laughs> that was Mally's reorder <laughs> that he was that he did last night. <laughs> Not quite. Well, to go in line with your thinking, Nathan, about yeah. how the, uh, Michael, the whole point of Halloween Kills is Michael's infected this town. Yeah. We're not going to let it happen anymore, and yet they fail. Sure. And in this movie, they kind of want to do that, but kind of not. Well, and and now there's like this, it's, it's inferred three times that now what Haddonfield believes is that it's Laurie's fault that yes. Michael came back. Everyone keeps referring to him as her boogeyman. I'm like, he killed your whole fire department. <laughs> yeah. People keep saying that he like, prov- she like like provoked him uh the dj says you teased a mentally disabled man yeah. like it's wild yeah that fucking dj <laughs> that fucking dj <laughs> <laughs> that fucking dj we'll talk about that dj would yeah. it work better if michael at the beginning of this movie was the one that killed the kid and mm. was killing all these people in this montage and Corey was go- taking the blame for it because of <laughs> how things look. Uh, I definitely want to see Michael shoot some kids in a Jeep. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing is like, would it work better? Because th- uh, they set it up so perfectly where when this couple walks in, it's it looks very obvious like he pushed this kid off the balcony. He's um, screaming, yeah. I'm going to kill you, you little shit, all this stuff. He's standing at the top of the stairs with a knife in his hand. Yeah, <laughs> but if, if Michael was the one that's actually doing it and they use Corey as a scapegoat uh-huh. and it drives home further this point of the Halloween Kills was trying to do it with the guy jumping out the window of like, you've got the wrong guy. Like uh-huh. he, he is evil personified right. and you're letting the, it eat the whole town alive to the point where you're just blaming anyone. It's like a witch hunt. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like it'd work a little bit better. But that's that's a good idea. But the problem with this movie and the last one is that it has these heady ideas that it barely follows through on. Like yeah. the, the execution is is fumbled or is only like half measures. Yeah. And I think you're t- like you said, I appreciate them taking big swings. Totally. But I think they're taking big swings, not connecting on some others. They're like foul balls. Like. Yeah. So to me, it's more like they pointed at the fences of where they're going to hit the home run mm-hmm. and sure. then struck out completely. <laughs> it's like what's what Mally said. They aimed for the bushes. Yeah. Or they, they, it's eight ball. They called the wrong pocket. Sure. And they were very confident about the pocket they were <laughs> Yeah. I will say smart move demolishing Michael Myers' house. Oh yeah. I don't know if you guys noticed that in the little the little montage here. Smart. I love that. Yeah. Smart. Good. Finally. Good idea for that. <laughs> Can you imagine when he finds out? He's like, well, now where the fuck am I gonna go? Yeah. <laughs> to the sewers with me. <laughs> he's like my home. Okay, so the the sewers shit. Okay. Uh-huh. 
Uh, do we want to talk about it now or do we want to wait and, and go over this Corey stuff at the beginning here? Let's just, we'll get, we'll get to the sewer. Okay. You know, I, I mean, I, I, the Corey stuff is, is interesting. And like, like you said, like he's, he's fantastic. Mm-hmm. The performance is really good. Really good. I, I had this moment at the very top of the movie when it cuts to him at the junkyard in the jumpsuit. And I went, uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> uh-oh. Well, okay. So the junkyard is just a retrofit him in the, in the jumpsuit at the end, right? Totally. Yeah. That's all it's there for. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And for the set piece and sure. for the uh hilarious <laughs> destruction of michael myers at the end of this movie oh my I god i'm gonna be honest i can't wait to get there Corey, the only like the biggest thing i don't like about him uh-huh. i guess is he that drinks milk no that's <laughs> chocolate milk that that's completely fine fair enough chocolate soldier <laughs> it just seems like allison's character solely depends on this character like sure. yep. allison has nothing else to do Except for with this. Well, he calls her out for that. Yeah. He calls her out like, I, I'm i just an ex- a, a project. project for you. <laughs> he indirectly is talking to the writers. Yeah. She, <laughs> she has terrible taste in guys Boy. because before this, she dated old Biff from Back to the Future. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that guy... What it, that guy's old enough to be her dad. Yeah, this that's is so weird. fucking gross. Yeah, no, it, it freaked me out because he looked uh, like from the far away shot. I thought it was Sheriff Brackett just stepped out of 1978. <laughs> it looked like he's got the same haircut and everything. Yeah. yeah. If that would have been like, oh, I'm Sheriff Brackett's son or something <laughs> right. like that. But the whole Allison, it, regardless if Corey's killed somebody or he's damaged or whatever, mm-hmm. Allison alone still falls for this dude in like three days straight, right? Like, yeah. In, it's so rushed. Oh, yeah. I was, I kept trying to figure out the timeline on this one, too, yes. because it, it, she acts like he is this, like, long lost faded love for her. Mm-hmm. Which is why a little shoot of instead of Corey riding his bike to the couple's house, uh-huh. maybe Allison drops him off and they were art dating then. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then the incident happened, and they split up. And he's like, don't forget, babe, I'm going to jump 15 buses tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta save Frank's heart, don't worry about it. <laughs> save Frank's heart, so I can whip his ass. 15 buses. <laughs> but, yeah, anyways, basically to establish a relationship so that it makes sense why they're so close. Sure. Yeah, no, it just, yeah, it fell way too flat on his face. Oh, it's some real A24 vibes, this relationship they have oh. and the music choices they use for him on his motorcycle. Wait, wait, stop. <laughs> I'm so glad this came up because <laughs> after the nurse and the doctor kill, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> I know what you're going to say. Uh-huh. Everyone knows what it cuts to, right? Uh-huh. It cuts to the nice romantic scene. I would take I will take everything I said about this movie away. I know what you're going to say. If Michael was on the back of that motorcycle. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. If, if uh-huh. Michael's got his arms wrapped, wrapped around, around his waist yeah. <laughs> with that Johnny Goth needle drop. Yeah. 100%. Uh, or or he's in a little sidecar with a helmet on. I would yeah. take either. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, I would take everything back. I mean, I don't know. Corey's got... Corey, like, mansplains sadness to her. Uh-huh. Like, he literally says... You shouldn't let that guy talk to you like that. It's going to make you sad, even if you don't think it does. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, it's... Corey, Corey is a work. Corey is a, is a character. He, he gets it, man. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Corey is definitely 100%, without a doubt, a character in this movie. He is 100%. <laughs> sure. I, I saw his name in the credits. Yeah. No doubt. No doubt. What a match cut to a burning pie to a bicycle spoke. <laughs> with. <laughs> I, thought, I, thought was, I was like, there's no reason this needs to be... Love it. There were some wild transitions in this movie. So many cutaways. Oh, one of my favorites is, is coming up pretty soon. I, I love... I mean, there's there's a lot of great character stuff early in this movie, though. I, I love this... Gro- I actually really love the grocery store scene, but the Muzak, the Muzak version of Don't Fear the Reaper in the oh, background. That mm-hmm. was great. That was fantastic. Oh, see, it took me out of it, man. I, I'm like, that's the kind of callback that I don't like. No, I loved it. <laughs> well, that... And then actually using Don't Fear the Reaper at the the end sure Ugh, no thank you <laughs> we get maybe the biggest reveal in the whole movie mm. uh, is that somehow Sandra returns holy oh my gosh, shit right? <laughs> no fucking way no fucking way i'm not gonna lie dude that kind of broke my heart i was like oh my god well it's such a weird scene it's yes. like oh why are you smiling would you buy at the grocery store and even like the whole movie even Lori was like wait what Lori's like huh yeah what, what? <laughs> yeah and it sucks because the scene right before that Lori is acting like the kid she never got to be. Yeah. And I like much like Halloween Kills, like where my favorite scenes in that movie were were Frank and Laurie talking together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I can't tell if it's because the scene is good or if it's because it's these two actors that I adore sharing the screen together. <laughs> I feel like it might be that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I disagree. I think their chemistry in this movie is so flat. Yeah. Like 
He's got nothing to do in this movie, Lo- much like most of the characters. No, and- he doesn't. I just, I just find him so charming. I love Will Patton. Yeah, no, I like Will Patton too. <laughs> oh no, I'm 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 with I'm with Nathan. I think their scenes are like they're cheesy sure. and. I don't really want those in a Halloween movie. Right. But it's fucking great. <laughs> no, I like those two actors and I like these characters, but I just feel like they got nothing to do. Like they feel like afterthoughts. That's true. It did seem weird. Like Lori came up and it would act a natural, like making fun of him about the vegetables or whatever. Uh-huh. And then the entire conversation about the learning Japanese and stuff was just. It's fun. Yeah. Yeah. It's cute. I don't know. But that scene after in the parking lot is a scene that came to mind when Nathan was just talking about how the town's blaming her and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You provoked that man. I was like, wait, were you waiting outside? Just waiting for me? Yeah. Did you know that he she was going shopping today? Yeah. Did y'all follow him and just wait for her? Like what the This fuck? is one of my pivotal problems with the movie too, is because uh-huh. what is the thesis of this movie? Right. It's for this scene and then the scene later on with Corey at the bar, mm-hmm. or maybe it's already happened at this point, we're jumping all around, but with Corey at the bar and the mom being there and confronting him, the thesis of this movie to me seems to be that if you made a mistake, you're not allowed to forgive yourself and move on and enjoy your life. Right. What a cynical view. But it also <laughs> seems to say like, but also those people are right. Yes. Or, you know, you know what I mean? Like, That's it's, what I'm saying. Yeah. It's so strange. I agree. Like, I don't understand. I don't know. I, I yeah there were there were a lot of weird mixed messages through I mm-hmm. mean just like the last one was somehow both about uh police brutality and an indictment of mob mentality like mm-hmm. of, of of protests mm-hmm. you know like yeah. I I it's it's all of these ideas that don't cohere yeah and and speaking of characters that have nothing to do, mm-hmm. uh, why is Lindsay in this movie? So she can do tarot. Yeah. They kept her alive to do nothing uh-huh. at all. Yep. Like, she, she's in two scenes and then that's it. And that's the thing. Originally, she wasn't supposed to be in this movie at all. Like, right. she was just going to survive kills and never hear from her again. Yeah, but then the old bartender couldn't make it back. I could have used the throwaway line of like, oh, Lindsay moved away. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But then people were like, oh, we liked her. They're like, okay, I don't know. Put her in the background. Yeah, yeah but then she does nothing. <laughs> She's just here to facilitate meetings between other characters. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She really is, yeah. And throw a super spreader event. <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> it would have been good if they had one scene where like uh-huh. Lindsay and Allison shared a scene and she's like, look, I know your mom is gone mm-hmm. and, and your grandma grandma is is tough to deal with at times sure at like a surrogate mother kind of thing of like comforting her like i know loss too i lost some of my best friends so sure. you're not a lo- like something like that would have been made it all worth it but they don't they don't do anything with her character yeah and said it's relationship advice which allison to be honest she doesn't talk about michael or what happened at all not really no. not at all like even even when Corey brings it up he's like i get it you're a survivor of michael myers poor okay Around this time is when I noted this. I was like, poor Allison, because... All right, let's 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 do a rundown. Her dad was murdered. <laughs> yeah. Her mom was murdered. Uh-huh. Her boyfriend was murdered. Her boyfriend's dad was murdered. Her friend was murdered after he tried to hit on her. Mm-hmm. She broke her leg fighting Michael Myers, and then a ton of other people were murdered that she knew, mm-hmm. and... Now it's four years later, she's finally moved on enough to like a guy, and then he becomes a murderer. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. She's not going to have a healthy adult not life. Not at all. No. Like, I would not be surprised if she becomes Lori in right. like, the 2018 version. Like, yeah. It's rough. Mm. Uh, poor Allison. I just I felt bad for her character because she doesn't do much either in this movie. Man. It's sad. She gets to hold the moon in a weird transition shot. Uh, <laughs> that was a weird yeah. shot, too. <laughs> Wait, what? There's a shot that like pans up from her hands over her eyes, like the dude in uh, Pan's Labyrinth, and then mm-hmm, it goes mm-hmm. over to the moon, and it just—I don't know—it's a very weird shot. Yeah, <laughs> are you talking about the weird shot when she holds her hands up for uh, Corey to put his hands in hers? Uh-huh. Yeah, and the whole time I couldn't help but to think if the, remember that slap game <laughs> like, in the middle of this. What if he did that? <laughs> she just. She was just like, I got you. This was my, I, I pulled a clip up here. It's right after the grocery stores scene. I thought oh, this yeah. transition was weird. I don't know if you guys noticed this. <laughs> I would <laughs> like to see those cherry blossoms. I think you'd like them too. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <Double minute. laughs> weird <laughs> what a weird transition that is right <laughs> also wait is he is he talking this bothered me when i watched it he's talking th- to her through, through a, a closed, closed window, window. Yeah. Yeah. quietly yeah yeah she should be like what 
<laughs> that would have been great. She's an old woman, but she's hard of hearing. She's been firing guns her whole like right. for a long time at this point. Like you gotta roll that window. No, down. no ear protection. I do, I do like this party scene sure. though. I like, I like the the slow transition of of Corey coming like coming to life for the first time in the movie. Yeah. Yes, some of the weirdest dancing I have yep. ever seen. In yeah, my that's what that's the life. part I didn't like. Oh, I, I did think he was having a seizure. Oh, like, yeah. I, 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 White <laughs> people dancing is never not fun. Funny, yeah, so you know. <laughs> Allison doing that weird like hand thing over him. Like, uh-huh. what are you doing? That's the only way that's acceptable to move to dead Kennedys, though. <laughs> I guess that's actually, you know what? No, Nathan, I t- Nathan, Nathan makes a very good point. That actually does track. <laughs> <laughs> I do like we we didn't really talk about it, but yeah, there this this relationship that blooms between them two when they're at the junkyard and uh-huh. he's showing her how to use a motorcycle uh-huh. and then this okay so we, we did talk about this too Lo- uh cory and Lori met at the gas station after the bullies were harassing him mm-hmm. and he flattened one of their tires when, on one of the cars and then i love this bully's dad oh my <laughs> god he's off screen yeah he's got his back to the camera the whole time you never see his face but he's explaining to the the head mechanic guy and he's like this fucking genius here driving three miles on a flat because he can't change a tire that he slaps the back of his kid head <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's some some rural town fucking uh, it's good <laughs> like the entirety of gen z got fucking shook just now. <laughs> my head cannon wants to say that that's ben tramer <laughs> the dad <laughs> i love that i love oh, that's that. pretty funny God. i like that yep no that's that's canon now holy shit i accept it i like that yeah that's honestly this trilogy's biggest flaw is that there's, there's no, no tramer no. So? No. and the fact that Corey wasn't ben tramer's kid oh. D- did they ever explain in this new trilogy what happened to Ben Tramer? I don't no. think they ever did, did they? No, I don't think so. No, that's fine. They mentioned that Laurie had a crush on him. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And that he, ex- that, you know, his other brother exploded in that one movie. And then <laughs> his other brother got shot behind the bushes in that one movie. Just imagine fucking like they, you know, Corey gets killed. They kill Michael. And then Frank runs in, sees Corey's body. He's like, my God, that's, that's Ben, ben Tramer's, Tramer's boy. boy. <laughs> you killed Corey Tramer. <laughs> <laughs> you bastard. <laughs> you killed Corey Tramer. <laughs> uh, I do like that this movie continues to tr- the tradition in these uh, Halloween movies of you can't use any licensed material for Halloween costumes. So uh-huh. Of course, there's a scarecrow and then that one kid's dad's a railroad worker. It's just silly. Are we going to talk about Nick Castle? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a streaker. God damn it. That that's the that's the worst callback yep. in this whole movie. See anything you like? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's not great. He's flashing this guy at the at the party. It's not it's not great. Oh, that one's rough. I do think the scarecrow mask is pretty cool though. I like that mask. I really don't mind it. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, the mask is cool. Pretty cool. The shot of him looking up from Dr. Mathis oh. is genuinely scary. Yeah. It's creepy. Oh yeah. And then like quickly just threw him off to go chase yeah. her mm-hmm. yeah that was pretty rough i was yeah, like good. Yeah. it's really good. Good, good good so okay and then he gets embarrassed he gets thrown off this bridge by yep. the bullies yeah <laughs> the city he lives in the city of angels he didn't he didn't, th- he didn't throw him what are you talking about he fell he yes, fell he fell you're right that's the story that's my fucking story he says <laughs> hey oh let's go get a slice <laughs> let's go get some fucking gabagool <laughs> Burgers for the boys. <laughs> that one girl in their in that high school group. That's mm-hmm. one of the Mulaney's, right? Oh, from Halloween Kills. Well, the officer is Mulaney, Doug Mulaney. Oh, I, I don't thought, know if you guys heard him. I thought you meant like John Mulaney. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. You shouldn't have pushed him off the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, the lead kid kind of looks like him. a little bit. A little bit. No, I think you might be right because the officer, when he goes in there later, he says nobody fucks with Doug Mulaney. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so don't try that Halloween shit with me. God. <laughs> Uh, Nobody, somebody killed my brother Bucky years <laughs> back. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, okay, I got. I don't understand what's going on with Michael here. Okay, so he's living in this sewer. It's mm-hmm. been four years, right? Mm-hmm. Oh my God. So, Eating them rats. Okay, what is the deal? Is he- <laughs> You sound like you're doing a fucking Seinfeld or tune. What's the deal with the sewer? I don't, this is Michael I don't Myers. understand what's going on. What is the deal? Because Does he need the mask to kill? The homeless <laughs> man says- People go in there, they don't come out. Okay, so uh-huh. that implies Michael has either been killing people in there or like maybe they fell off the... Like, how many people have been gone missing in these four years? How many people fall off that bridge? Right? Yeah. That's my question. I and mean, there's a missing poster next to the is. bridge, too. There, yeah, the billboard, yeah. Which I, I like. I think that's a nice little detail. She fell off the bridge. Is he eating the rats? Is he, is he eating the people that go down there? Like, I, maybe both. Well, we know... Well. 
he doesn't have to eat if he stabs them. If he kills them, he gets that juice! <laughs> he, re- he regenerates right so there. So this is like Secret of the Ooze, right? <laughs> it's in a sewer. Ingestion is the only option. <laughs> There's rats. How is no one connected the dots here that, oh, four years, people keep going missing right around this area, mm-hmm. uh, and there's a sewer drain right here. No one's looked in there? There's a hobo. Well, and also, like, how many people did Michael kill mm-hmm. between Halloween 2018 and kills? Mm-hmm. Like, 30? Yeah. yeah. Th- Where's the FBI? Nobody. This town. <laughs> yeah. This town has to be on lockdown. I'm sorry. Where's the FBI? Like, call those motherfuckers in. This movie should have started like Jason goes to hell with someone dressing up like a cat and luring him <laughs> into the center of town <laughs> and then blowing him up. Oh, my God. If that's when, like, Corey, like, was going as Michael Myers and then the FBI, the SWAT teams, like, swoop in and blow oh him to Oh, my God. <laughs> this has been a four-year operation. We finally got him. <laughs> better, hey, better movie. And then Frank walks in. Oh, y'all blew, blew up, up Ben, ben Tramer. Tramer. Boy. God. His back is to the camera. I kind of want to ADR and make it say, nobody fucks with Doug Tramer. <laughs> oh, God. So, yeah, I didn't know I was watching uh, an It movie. I thought I was watching a Halloween movie, but all Pennywise Michael's down here. Uh-huh. This... What are you talking about, movie? What? He looks into his eyes and it makes him evil. Come on, that's always been part of the canon. <laughs> this is Jason Goes to Hell. Um, this is that that scene is the epitome of just look at him. <laughs> <laughs> that's a callback, David. Yeah. This is this is Jason Goes to Hell. Michael uh-huh. is just passing on his evil sh- or you know what? I watched um the most recent, not the reboot, but the most recent Chucky movie, The Cult of Chucky. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's a fun one. Where there's just the throwaway line where Brad Dervis is like, oh, yeah, now I can transfer my soul into multiple people at the same time. He does. He really does do that. <laughs> He's like, anyway, I figured it out. Yeah, so he says, I found a voodoo for dummies book online. That's right. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, they're doing the same shit in this movie. Michael's just passing it on, paying it for. <laughs> Michael grabs him by the throat and goes, adue dumbbella. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first words he's spoken in this entire. Oh. <laughs> so was this homeless man like an accomplice for Michael? Was he just lured people in there? Because I was getting big vibes of the guy from Halloween Five who yeah. like pulls him out of the river and yeah. just leaves him on a yeah. cot for a year. Again, some more maniac cop two shit going on right here. He's like a gatekeeper. Yeah. And then uh, I don't know if you guys noticed, but this murder of this homeless man when Corey does it, uh, sponsored to you by Mick. Uh, by McDonald's. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> right I saw that too. This McMurder. Do you think the M stands for murder? Holy shit. Michael. Oh, Michael. Oh, Michael murder. Ooh. McMichael. McMichael murder. <laughs> <laughs> My, I'm sorry, I'm delusional at this point <laughs> in this fucking movie. <laughs> We're like 20 minutes in this movie. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I don't know, man. This Again, this is where it just feels like Rob Zombie Halloween-ish yeah. to me. Like, I don't know, all of it just... It's got a stank on it that I don't like. But from this point on, Corey has no glasses. Yep. His eyes Fixed are turned his black and he whispers all his dialogue. Michael yeah. should become a televangelist. He cured that boy's <laughs> eye problems. Yep. Like, Corey becomes evil Toby Maguire from Spider-Man 3. <laughs> My God, he sure does. If all he missed was a little hair flip and some uh, finger guns. I'm going to put some dirt in your eye. <laughs> Yeah, I just, I they they do the thing where he he goes outside Lori's house and stands on the corner, Ugh. and I just can't I can't be afraid of a guy named Corey Cunningham. Yeah. I'm no. sorry. The shot where she's he teleports yep. from behind her is yep. yeah. bonkers. Yep. Yep. Oh, it's way worse later on in the junkyard. But Corey oh, yeah. definitely became supernatural. Yes, because yeah, he just teleported left to right in this movie. So, did anyone else laugh like when? Michael, like it showed the hobo turning around doing his little singing thing, <laughs> mm-hmm. and it shows Corey's like upper body, like getting drugged into the drain. Yeah, oh, yes, it's pretty funny. When I saw that, I shut off in the theater. I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> it's like Chang going into the vents in community. Oh my god, so yeah, good. oh my god, <laughs> yeah. So Corey says he takes Allison out and he's trying to explain things. The f- he says one line. He says, "I, I killed, killed someone." someone. Uh huh. There's no follow up questions. And then just <laughs> keeps walking. And then I guess she just goes across town with him. Yeah, there's no reaction. Yeah, and she just looks at him. Yeah. Looks him in the eyes like it's a loving embrace. Like, yeah, no reaction. No follow ups, nothing. I, I get that. She, like, like she obviously thinks he's referring to the kid. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Like, I get what they were trying to do there, sure. but it's so fucking goofy. It's poorly edited. It's weird. If he would have said, I killed someone, come on, I'll show you. <laughs> yeah. And then they go to the house or something. Thing to connect it, but yeah. it's 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 real poor uh, editing and writing right there for sure. Yeah. Well, and when they get to the house, it b- it begins my least favorite callback in the movie 
which is that two different characters play Laurie's theme on the piano. Oh, yeah. I hated it. Which I was, I like threw my hands up the second time it happened. Hated it. I thought, I th- the first time I saw the movie, I was like, is that? No. Yes. And then on the rewatch, I was like, God damn it. Yeah, I, that's exactly, that's exactly what my response was. And then he does it later and I'm like, come on. <laughs> it was fine in the trailer. Sure. Yeah. Don't, don't need that in the movie. Yeah. yeah. So all the cops are at this diner. Mm-hmm. They all step down from this 24-year-old kid. <laughs> yes. No fucking way that happens in the right. real world. We've also got this bit where she explains, like, when I heard you killed a child, I felt like I've always known you. <laughs> 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 what is that? Oh, man. What? <laughs> That's so goofy. Nah, I've, that, that line rang true to me. I've used that <laughs> one. But no, we just... It's it's terrible, but I mean, uh-huh. just recently, a cop shot a 17 year old kid in the dr- at the parking lot of a McDonald's for eating in his car. Yep, I don't believe these cops would just step down and he's like, "Wow, take it easy, man." No. Like he's afraid of him. No, I thought you were still talking about the movie. I was like, "Fuck, did I, <laughs> did I go to the bathroom?" Yeah, yeah what's that McDonald's we saw in the background? Uh, there's a, a, d- a deleted scene that you didn't see. <laughs> this trilogy has been very like fast and loose with how it feels about cops yep. because like the second movie, Hawkins is just like, "I wish I'd." Sh- Shot that unarmed suspect yep. in the head. Yep. <laughs> yep. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I was the only one that decided not to. Yeah. Like, Ugh, oh, boy. Man. And also at this point, I'm like, I, I'm, I'm sitting in the theater. I'm thinking, oh, my God, we had two movies with, uh, with uh, shit, Allison wearing Bonnie and Clyde costumes. Yeah. Are, is this... We're, is that the direction we're going? Yeah, I was going to say it's certainly a callback to that to that 2018 one. And, and apparently that was one of the endings that they did consider was stupid. that she runs off with him. Stupid. Yeah. Very stupid. Much like the rest of this movie. <laughs> I do say I have a little bit of knowledge okay, of okay. the original ending of this, but we'll get to that later. It's a, but Mally beat me to the joke in our text thread because I was going to ask, is this the closest we'll get to that MTV Halloween movie <laughs> that he talked about <laughs> right. on the Halloween 4 episode? Oh, God. Corey riding a motorcycle? So close. Like, the fa- like you are, yeah, like you you put the the new Michael on a motorcycle, you don't clad him in full leather. I what know. the fuck movie? No, nope. Messed up. Instead, Corey's become the Joker. <laughs> He's just giggling in the darkness. Honestly, one of my biggest, uh, me and my friend that I saw this with, we discussed one of our biggest letdowns was that they like they make Corey's motorcycle kind of very important to him as a character. Mm -hmm. We don't get a single kill with the motorcycle. Like, dude, shove someone's face into the tire or something something. like come the fuck on. Like you just abandon that motorcycle immediately and take the pickup truck. I know. I was pissed. Give me a motorcycle kill. Is that a callback to to Halloween 4 with Michael <laughs> driving the, the tow truck? Don't know. Don't care. Okay. Should have been a motorcycle kill. Should have. Or at least have a shot where he's wearing the mask as Michael driving yeah. the motorcycle. That would have been cool. That would have been kind of cool. Honestly. That would have also been hilarious. <laughs> that would have been fucking great. One thing I will say that I appreciate about this movie is that they did not... They did not have Corey spouting one-liners. He Thank stayed God. silent as the killer. Well, he kind of does. Does he? Not oh, not as Michael. Not as Michael. No, no, no. But he does have a little bit of a quip. Because one of the lines earlier on in the movie when he first meets Laurie and the bullies are picking on him, they uh-huh. call him uh, a freak show and her the psycho or something like that. Oh, and he, right. He calls that back later. He goes, oh, you're the freak show or something like that. I don't remember which was you're which. But <laughs> <laughs> you're stupid. <laughs> no, that's you. This is the worst cop ever, this Doug Mulaney guy. He yeah. finds a dead body. Doesn't call it in. Proceeds into a sewer drain alone. Okay. Th- no, that all that sounds like absolutely normal cop, uh-huh. cop behavior. Top notch police work right there. <laughs> Did anybody see when he's shining the flashlight in the background? You saw Michael like hunched over. Oh, no, no, I didn't see it. <laughs> I missed that. This seems lit pretty poorly. No one saw that. Okay, because I saw it. I saw it in the theaters, but. Uh-huh. The- my buddy I was with didn't see it. And then Kobe and me and everybody were watching it last night. No one saw it. So I had to back it up. And I was like, <laughs> it was very well done. And you can't even fucking see it. Yeah. I, I thought it was so poorly lit that I couldn't see. I was so distracted by the wall that has Michael's face. What is that? I don't know. That's don't what understand. Doug asks too. And I can't fucking tell you, man. Yeah. I have no clue. The worst part is I... I can't remember if it was David Gordon Green or one of the producers. Someone involved in this movie, like, posted a picture of, like, the face in the wall. Mm -hmm. Like, since the movie came out, they started posting a bunch of BTS photos, and one of them was, like, the face in the concrete. I'm Mm -hmm. just like, what the fuck is happening? I don't know. 
Is it supposed to be like Hellraiser where he was part of the wall and then he broke it? <laughs> right. <laughs> Michael was just so tired. Like he just slept against the wall. Like you ever Oh, like, that's what he did for four years. He just leaned against that wall. Yeah, whenever you like you know, whenever you like lay on a pillow for long enough. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it makes the impression. Yeah, for yeah. four years he just laid against the wall and it made a little indent in yeah, the yeah. concrete. Everyone knows that's how concrete works. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You just gotta lean hard. I I hate this so much this michael plus Corey team up it is so fucking stupid why does michael care about this kid at all why does he not kill him immediately because he saw a kindred spirit why because you know we've never seen michael kill other criminals in these movies right michael killed his sister when he was a child Corey didn't kill anyone on purpose Mm -hmm. why michael's supposed to be an unstoppable killing machine he he contemplates killing an infant in that 2018 one okay we don't know what was going through his mind he he thought about killing that kid dude don't (laughs) even come at me with this shit (laughs) don't even come at me with this shit what if in his head his inner monologue is all like guys what if i just took what if i killed this bit no i'm kidding (laughs) yeah (laughs) that's exactly what he did he's like should i kill that bit no i I can't do that no 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 he he pulled a terrence howard and iron man next time baby (laughs) (laughs) what if that works on so many levels what what if they just said fuck Uh, the timeline and they're like that baby from 2018 is is Corey Corey. kind of (laughs) it's been four years later that'd be fucking amazing (laughs) or that's the kid that was getting uh Babysat in the beginning. Oh yeah, that, that lines up <laughs> more. Oh, so funny. <laughs> what if as he's killing this cop, he just was accidentally stabbing Corey at the same time? I, that's what I was expecting. I was why like, why didn't that happen? Well, that's what I thought because that, like, if you look at how big that knife is, that knife pins people t- to walls. Corey's gonna have some stomach wounds. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, and then he has probably the worst line in the movie for me, which is "Show me how to do it." And Show I'm like, me. boy, this is some sexy saxophone kicking <laughs> right here. So, like, show you what? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Show you, show you what, though? How to how to stab someone? You really need to be shown that? You did it earlier in the movie. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. If they wanted to, like, do this red herring, like, copycat killer thing, and then it should have been at this scene where as soon as Michael got the juice and <laughs> Give me the juice. Gets, fixed juice. his scoliosis, he just killed Corey immediately. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I expected. That would have been great. Yeah. If that would have been like the yeah, like the bait and switch, that would have been great. Yeah. yeah, like they like they kinda go like full psycho with it, like kill your protagonist in the middle of the sure, fucking movie. Sure. Well, this is also where I expected the movie to become Hellraiser now, with Corey just bringing bodies to Michael. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. Or what if, um, like when when he was doing the piss shivers, they just kind of <laughs> rotated the camera behind him, and it's uh, Herbert West from Reanimator just yes. injecting him right there. <laughs> He's like, oh, I have the power. God damn it, the piss shivers. Piss you gotta shivers. stop saying that. It, it's what it is. It's the same motion you I do when you get the piss shivers. <laughs> yeah. Do we need to explain that to our uh, female audience? Like, what a piss You shiver. you take this one. You tell it best, okay, man. Okay, sure. So, ladies, when you're, when you're a guy and you're taking a piss, I right? really don't think we need to explain this. <laughs> you know what? That's fine. We'll leave I it really on a cliffhanger. Don't think they need to know. <laughs> They're going to Google this later. But Michael's not the only one who's energized by this because Corey goes over to Allison's house, pushes her up against the wall, smells her boobs, uh-huh. and then starts yeah. interrogating her about Michael, at which she goes, it's probably time to bang, right? Yeah. yeah. She takes his ass upstairs <laughs> yeah. and fucks. They both got their nut in the mm-hmm. same night. How sweet. <laughs> Wait, Allison and Corey or Corey and Michael? All three got it. Both. <laughs> Corey is not giving anyone orgasms. Oh, no. Are you that's kidding that's a good me? Point. Yeah, Corey uh, is a missionary old lady. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he goes to her and he's like, I need you to show me how to do it. <laughs> Michael showed me how to do it. I need you to show me how to what do it. What was that? <laughs> Nothing. Oh, no, no, no. This is Corey discovering his sexuality the whole movie. He's going to people like he's going to and from people like, show me how to do it. You know, you show me how to do it. <laughs> well, well, how do you, I mean, how do you do it? And then I'll see how. <laughs> Michael showed me his fuck style. What's yours? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Didn't we have a a, like a lengthy conversation <laughs> about Michael's fuck style yeah. in this oh, yeah. episode. Oh, yeah. yeah, Corey's has got to be dry as hell. There's dry. nothing happening there. No <laughs> dry. You know, well, Mally's pitching using peanut butter as lube. What am I supposed to do? <laughs> Scarecrow style. Hey, he's using pine straw. What do you want, what do you want from me in this situation? <laughs> uh, I don't know, Dustin, but it wasn't that. <laughs> <laughs> we go to this doctor's house with this redheaded nurse that works with Allison mm-hmm. and 
We're back again with these obscenely long kitchen knives holding up whole bodies. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> it's just nuts. We got to have one in every movie. I'm t- and as I said last time you brought this up, y- you got to step up your kitchen knife game. <laughs> as with all the other movies, we got to have the fucking head tilt. Yeah. Got to do it. Why? Why can we stop doing it? Because David Gordon Green needs you to know he <laughs> saw Halloween. Exactly. Well, and here's my issue. I don't mind them doing the head tilt. Shouldn't have done it with that one. Well, right. I don't know. He should have done should've, it. Should should Corey have done no, it? No, Corey should not have done it. Michael should have done it after he killed, killed Corey. Corey. Yeah. Oh, I like I that. Fair enough. That's a good one. Like, because the head tilt is kind of like the, sup, bitch? <laughs> and that would have been the perfect fucking moment. I get why he does it for this one, because it's the same death as Bob from the first movie. Right. But he's like, this looks familiar. <laughs> <laughs> now, I agree. After he kills Corey, that would have been a good one. It's so funny, now that we're talking about it, that he gives Corey a very mercy kill Compared to Cameron in the last movie. Oh, sure. Yeah. Like, yeah. What if he would what if they would have swapped? What if he would have done all of that shit to Corey at the end? Better movie? <laughs> better movie. I think better movie. Cameron was an asshole. Cameron wasn't. But Corey's an asshole. What are you talking no, about? No, Cam- <laughs> Corey killed a kid. That's yeah. true. <laughs> Cameron was just an asshole. Yeah. Cameron didn't deserve all that. Corey has more like rationale for being an asshole. Yeah. Sure. Cameron just sucked. Sure, yeah, fair enough. Okay, that's better. Not for nothing, though. I do think this is a good sequence. I do like the sequence. I like this sequence. Sequence too, like I, when it when it cuts to Corey just stabbing the fuck out of the doctor. Uh, it's good. I think that's ge- like when he when his head like snaps up and looks at yeah. her. I think it's genuinely scary. That was probably the best scare of the movie. Agreed. Honestly, yeah, it puts in your mind like what if Michael Myers was energetic and not just a lumbering like oh yeah. like what if he was literally going after you i mean yeah. it gets into ghost face territories yes. but because there is a little shenanigan here with the door closing on his hand but and also like i you know we've talked about this we talked about this in halloween 4 but like we get a killer in one of these movies with us with a different aesthetic yeah and it's it's chilling it's like pretty it's, good. you don't expect to see that in the darkness in a halloween movie did y'all notice that when she was walking out the glass door that he was like in the darkness before the motion lights came on. Yes. Uh, no, I didn't. I didn't notice that. Yeah, yeah it, he was just going at it, just stabbing, stabbing, stabbing. There's a lot of stuff with reflections in the second half of this movie. Yeah, uh-huh. it really is. And out of focus shit, which pissed me off so much. <laughs> oh, yeah. no, no, no. There's one part coming up here that's uh, out of focus that I thought was fucking dope. At least it's not all that fucking weird bullet time shit from the end of Halloween Kills. Well, they, <laughs> they do bring back the useless zooms they're not as egregious though not nearly as bad but there is a bunch yeah not nearly as bad (laughs) after we talked about that for kills i could not help but see them in almost every episode of righteous gemstones last season (laughs) yep yep. (laughs) it's wild maybe danny mcbride really likes those but they use them for like comedic effect in that show it's a little different yeah it's usually yeah it's usually used in a shot of danny mcbride being like oh shit yeah Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) which is the appropriate time to use that correct (laughs) i do like this scene but one part i don't understand is what's what is Corey doing with his hand? Because so- I think he's trying to show her that it's him. But if that's the case, she take off the mask. Like, I guess maybe she wouldn't wreck it. Well, she does know him because everybody knows this guy. But he's like, yeah. let me unwrap this bandage on my hand, put it on the glass. Well, he, the mask was off when you did that. Yeah. That's all you need to do. Why is he unwrap his hand? I thought it was I thought it was for Michael and not for her. <laughs> yeah. Well, I will I will say uh an annoying woman like mean lady like that yeah. probably would not recognize that fucking kid's face. Right. But she she would remember the wound, I guess. She remembers him because of the story ab- like the, about his reputation in the town. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, he te- she teases Allison at the party about yeah. him too. Yeah, she was at the party with him. Ah fuck, I got nothing then. Yeah. Dumb. I do love that <laughs> moment when Allison is like, can you ever just like shut, shut your the goddamn fuck up. mouth? Yeah. 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 <laughs> and then she immediately doesn't take the hint. Which is what we were all thinking yeah. that whole every scene with that character, we were all thinking. Total that. mean girl. Yep. But okay, so Michael pins her to the wall. He takes off the wrap, mm-hmm. holds it up to the glass, mm-hmm. and then Michael notices it somehow mm-hmm. i don't know if like a feel the feel his presence over yeah. there or did they- i i don't know i don't know what this is this is the shot where i thought it was gonna be them riding together oh, yeah yeah well how did they get there god how did they get there together they rode that motorcycle together yeah. they did that. he got the motorcycle well, that's the thing i think they're trying to show like i don't know that's one of my biggest issues they don't make it clear i don't think he's like you know fucking getting on the back of his motorcycle and cruising him around town i th- think they try they're trying to say that like Corey's not necessarily taking him places like he's leading michael he's following him yeah like yeah. it's it's weird i don't know i don't know like a 
Come on. <laughs> It'd be, I would have enjoyed it more if, okay, so Michael kills the cop. Uh-huh. He, you know, goes, uh, gets his juice. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And now Michael's out and he can go out of the sewer and start killing people. And Corey's just following as like a fanboy. Uh-huh. Well, you don't know. Maybe, maybe this guy's house is right next to the sewer. <laughs> right. <laughs> You don't know. <laughs> you know how, like, Sandra was apparently Laurie Strode's neighbor, even yeah. though Laurie was in the middle of the fucking wilderness. And, th- yeah, they made it very explicit that she's nowhere near anyone. <laughs> that's that's the thing. Like, my big issue with all of that is that, like, once Michael's out of the sewer, I feel like he's out of the sewer. Like, yeah. he, he doesn't go back. Yeah, right. But this movie is like, no, no, he comes, no, no, he goes back. <laughs> Now that he's found the secret of the ooze. Yeah. yeah. I guess that's a question I have, too. I guess technically everyone's got a neighbor. It's just how far away is that neighbor? <laughs> sure. I feel like there's a, there's a Stephen Wright joke in here somewhere. <laughs> I just haven't thought about it. Well, Michael doesn't have a home anymore, guys. Yeah. Like, so where's he going? Oh, oh man. He, uh, he's, he's not homeless. He is experiencing lack of home yes. or whatever that new PC way of saying it is. Yes. What if Michael instead, of, like, once the homeless dude died, he... Michael just took his tent. You just see a scene where he's dragging the tent into the sewer. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a he's got an old school bindle like over his shoulder. I like it. So they go to this radio station, and why suddenly we're in Blue Valentine? Oh yeah, I got that vibe. Why does everyone that Allison or Corey come across have to stop and monologue at them <laughs> about stuff they've been through? Yeah, yeah. like. Oh, I know, I know you. you. You're are. that guy. You yeah. did this. Yeah. Every single character does it. And then one of the most baffling lines for me was Allison says, you never shut up. I hear your voice everywhere. And I'm like, well, yeah, if every scene that I've seen it before in this movie, you turn the radio station on to his show. To his show. Of yes. course, you're going to hear him everywhere you go. Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> During the Universal logo, you had that radio on. Yeah. And then in the car later when they're going to the party, she puts it on. Yeah. It's like, of course you hear this guy everywhere. You go. Like y'all, like motherfucker, y'all ain't got Bluetooth. Like, what's up? <laughs> For real. Y'all ain't got some CDs or anything. You're just gonna this is the only thing that's playing in Haddonfield. No, this Haddonfield has two things. They have WURG and they have uh Blue Oyster Cults uh-huh. Agents of Fortune. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what's um what was the guy from Halloween Six, the DJ? It should have been Barry that. Sims. It should have been Barry. Yeah, mm-hmm. they should have brought Barry back. <laughs> I bet she wears crotchless panties and, and barks, barks like, like a dog. dog. <laughs> Talk about some incel behavior here with Corey. He tells Lori, if I can't have Allison, no one can. I was like, all right. That made me cringe. Well, I mean, right before this, he gets kissed by his mom Boy? on the mouth. Boy! <laughs> Slapped and then kissed on the mouth. Okay, yeah. Wait, let's, okay, okay, okay. So, Nathan, Nathan, Nathan. Mm-hmm. Hit a little close to home for you, or what's up? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, just just the part where the where the dad slash uncle yes! slash step... Okay, no. okay, 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 okay. Now that we're here, I gotta talk about this. Okay, so the lip kissing didn't bother me as much as when they panned the camera to the right and the dad is sitting there. I hope you find love. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. He has that wild ass line, yeah. but then he's in a chair under a blanket drinking beer. <laughs> I thought he was like, I thought I saw some motion going on under that blanket. <laughs> I was very, jerking. I was so oh. confused. <laughs> this is, this, this dynamic between these three people are wild. Corey, why are you cucking your stepdad? <laughs> Don't make me dislike Ronald. Why are you texting your stepdad at the table? Right. <laughs> this boy is 24 years old and she is treating him like he's Carrie White. No wonder he, yeah, exactly. No wonder he killed that kid. And you're telling me this is not the dad, this is the <laughs> uncle? I don't know. I think it's the stepfather. No wonder Nathan has four podcasts. I, <laughs> <laughs> I have like tried to figure, I have seen him referred to as the uncle. I've seen him referred to as the stepdad. There's been a couple of different step uncle, step bucket. uncle, stunkle. I, I, I thought he. He was like adoptive parents of like 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 he became a foster kid, but I'm like yeah. no, because he's like 20 when he kills that kid. Yeah. So what the fuck? Yeah, I don't I don't know. But then it's clear that's his biological mom. He's just the dad that stepped up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. he's just the dad that loved step up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man, people that say Channing Tatum can't act obviously haven't seen his <laughs> earlier movies. Correct. Channing Tatum wouldn't be too bad of a shape. He's got to get the build for one, you know? Go on. He's got a square head that would look good in a, in a <laughs> Michael Square Marks head! <laughs> he could ride a motorcycle. Uh, yeah. I liked, I liked this character. 
the, the the relationship between these two characters. Oh, me too. The quote unquote dad, I guess, and and Corey. Like, well, but that's a problem, right? That we can't figure out what the familial relationship is. Nope. <laughs> yeah, no. And that it's a weird reveal to the first time you see Corey at dinner, and then it just cuts, and he's across the table. And I'm like, wait, <laughs> yeah, what? Because his boss. Before this, I'm just like, oh, what a nice boss. Yeah. 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 Giving him a motorcycle, and then he's jerking off <laughs> <laughs> later to some familiar familial disputes. I didn't. I didn't get it. I hope you find love. What the fuck kind of line is that? That's a wild line. No, what if with all those scenes, we found out that it is just his boss? <laughs> <laughs> <He's> just- <laughs> your mom invited me over for dinner. I hope you find love. <laughs> uh, don't tell your mom about the motorcycle. Oh, uh, he's just plowing Corey's mom. And he's like, hey, if you want a job, you got to let me come over. <laughs> This guy's a real monster. I'm yes. glad we unearthed this. Real, we're doing the real work that no one else is doing. Yeah, man. I liked him before I started this podcast. <laughs> there we go. Guys, this is bar none. This is up there with the kung fu, karate stuff, and resurrection. Oh. This is up there with all the goofy shit that these movies get into. This scuffle yeah. with Corey and Michael <laughs> in the sewers. Oh, yeah. I mean, before that, we have that conversation with Lori where she doesn't use the door and goes out the window oh, instead. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Wait. 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 I want to know y'all's opinion. So Kobe brought up a, a good uh, or a good point. Mm-hmm. He was like, "Hey, did this really happen? Oh. Was Lori really there, or was he going crazy?" No, I think she was definitely there. But that's a cool idea. Yes, it really happened because that ties into what I heard about possibly the original ending. Okay, gotcha. because. Okay. There's because the stairs where he's sitting is literally facing where she is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then he looks down and looks back up and she's gone. Oh, no one has peripheral vision in this movie. No. Like the DJ later on looks right at Michael. And everyone can teleport. It, yeah. Yep. Exactly. I mean, they're, they, that's, yeah, say what you will, that's continuity from kills. That's true. Sure. <laughs> sure. Teleportation. And I guess, like, at that moment, it's like, man, you know, you're busted when, like, someone catches you sleeping on the blood stain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of the kid that you murdered. Right. Like, <laughs> Shit, well, the gig is up. I thought this scuffle would turn... Okay, so this movie doesn't know what it wants to do. Is yeah. Michael supernaturally strong, or is he a weak, frail old man? Well, he's he's both, depending on what the scene needs. Exactly. True that. Yep. True <laughs> that. But he gets rocked by these 17-year-old bullies early in the movie, and now suddenly he can take on Michael Myers? Mm-hmm. What? I will say, I do like the shot that it was taken outside the tunnel. It's so funny. <laughs> but it didn't. it didn't help. The situation? No, it, you're right. It should have been some Scooby Doo shenanigans where things are coming in from left and right of the screen. Yeah. <laughs> this felt like a scene from Eastbound and Down. Like yes. the, this yes. fight is hilarious. Give me that mask, Michael. I need that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fight between him and Stevie. Like yeah. it's, it's so goofy. It's so bad. No, Kenny, I found this mask earlier. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, we should redub this oh scene. Holy shit! <laughs> I mean, it wouldn't be the fr- it wouldn't be the first time we've done Haddonfield and Bound. Yeah. <laughs> but there's a shot. The shot before he actually goes into the tunnel is just Michael standing there like a goober. Yeah, he uh-huh. just stands. Yeah, he's just, just, just chilling. Like, not doing anything. Who, me? <laughs> <laughs> Michael powers down when he's not in use. Yeah, he's Johnny Five. And he's a Terminator. He's like, let me go into a, a sleep mode. Let me just mm-hmm. stand. Oh, yeah, Corey's here. Maybe he's got some more juice. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he brought someone for me to eat. Did you, do you have any? Yeah. Did you get the chocolate soldier I asked for? <laughs> <laughs> Look, man, I know there's a McDonald's right there. They can't. The ice cream machine can't be down all the time. Bring me some. I heard it's because they just don't want to clean it. Just tell them to do it. Just tell them, tell them to clean it, and they got to give you one. If you ask for no salt on the fries, they have to make them fresh. That's so true. That's so true. And if they don't, just ask for the manager. They'll do whatever. Look, just tell them that they forgot the honey mustard in the bag. That will give you another one. It's okay. <laughs> Oh, I like I now I want to see the buddy the like the buddy comedy of these yes. two. Oh, God. <laughs> Them going through the drive thru on the back of Corey's motorcycle. <laughs> Lori tries to get through to Allison while she she's still holding the paper airplane from the last scene. Yep. And she's holding it awkwardly up at eye level in frame. Like the whole scene, I'm like, Lori, you're fucking art what is this <laughs> like we get that he made a paper airplane one time why is it important are you gonna throw the shit or what she treats allison like a bear you got to make yourself look as big as possible <laughs> <you're raising laughs> and then allison accuses is the latest person to accuse laurie of causing hysteria yep. she's like it's your fault my friends are dead you're obsessed with death well yeah your mom was murdered um, yeah like horrific and your dad but the phone call before that with Corey and allison was like your mom she or your grandmother, she wants to kill me. And Allison's just all like, 
Yeah, that sounds like her. Yeah, that's know? right. Like, yeah, that's that's par for the course. <laughs> that sounds about right. All right, I'll pack my bags. I'll meet you at the bank. Like, <laughs> All right, we cut to this junkyard scene where Corey begins, and I, I, all this stuff. I I think this Margot girl did not deserve to be killed. No, oh my god, right? It's pretty bad. She had it pretty fucking bad. Yeah, it's so funny you keep calling us Corey begins because this movie made me feel the way I felt when I saw Dark Knight Rises for the first time, mm-hmm. and the main character isn't Batman, but whoever the cop is that Joseph Gordon Levitt plays. Yep. Yep. No, I, I totally agree. But I, I do think um, they are making she makes this the ultimate horror movie mistake in this this scene. She mm. doesn't realize she lives in a three dimensional world and she can <laughs> only move up and back yeah. instead of left and right. Yes. The Prometheus school of running away from. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes. It's Charlie yeah. Theron yeah. not yep. realizing she can go to the left. But also before that, how he kills the um the mullet kid, the Diane Wood kid. Yeah, the Diane Wood kid <laughs> with a drumstick yep. in earshot from everybody. Uh-huh. It's a convertible, yep. tops down, in sight. <laughs> yep. Teleports to the truck. Yep. Turns the lights on to no all the, all this tracks. Yeah, mm-hmm. all this tracks. No, I I do think Margo getting railroaded on the other side of this fence though is really funny. Oof, <laughs> insane. It's wild. Again, Robert De Niro and Kate Fear laughing at this <laughs> shit, dude. I thought it was fucking great. I, oh man, rewatching it today, I noticed the incredibly obvious jump cut when mm-hmm. the stepdad is shot yeah. uh-huh. and Corey vanishes. It's like super obvious. Yeah. It's like bewitched level obvious. <laughs> it's so bad. Like, where did he go? He's David Blaine. He's just fucking disappearing left to right. <laughs> <Mind and freak. laughs> but before that, though, he gives this fucking kid a rifle and is like, there you go. Yeah, and like, sure. What the fuck is wrong with you? He's like, it's loaded. It's loaded. Fuck, what? And then that's his demise right there. That's why you don't give kids guns. Yeah. <laughs> Great shot, by the way. That kid is like, that what, shot. 30 yards away? Yeah. <laughs> Pretty good. If only Corey wasn't a magician, he would have got him. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> right. And... Actually, I, a, a line I think is pretty cool here is when Margo's under this chain link fence and can't get out, and uh, she's like, "Where's Stacy?" And this kid's like, "Stacy's dead." And she goes, "You're dead too." Yeah. Oh yeah, that's, that's good. good. And then turns around and cores right there. And then to me, this would have been one of the best kills. No, had no, no. It been in focus. No, no, I disagree. I disagree entirely because then it be- becomes a fucking Friday the Thirteenth movie. Yeah, I'm actually glad it's out of focus. And focusing on Margot's reaction, I think, is uh, the smart move. Yep. <laughs> I agree. JT is fucking wrong. Yeah. <laughs> For the first time. I typically am. Get fucked, Jimothy. Well, no, I think I was more upset just because this entire uh, killing spree mm-hmm. that it goes on, mm-hmm. almost all of them are cut away or out of focus. Yeah. Sure. That's But that's fine because it's Corey. I don't care who Corey kills, dude. I'm sorry. Corey Ween kills. <laughs> Neither do I, but... but- just walking up to the girl with the with the wrench or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I could. We could have seen her get hit. I, yeah, I think that. Yeah, maybe that's on. That's an intentional thing, though. Of like, you've got this guy in like a pure white mask beating a young black girl. Maybe right. that's not the best optic. <laughs> Agreed. Ah. Yeah. Agreed. And uh, with uh, a monkey wrench, uh, no less too. Oh. So let's, maybe it, maybe it's good that we cut away from that. So JT's wrong and racist. <laughs> okay, so we're moving on. Um, <laughs> But no, I think this is the coolest kill in the movie is the blowtorch. And I it's like good. that it's out of focus off screen a little bit because it your, my mind makes up for it. And oh, the, yeah. the sound design, the kid like gargling as yeah. his throat's being inflamed. Ugh. Yeah, it's, it is pretty rough. It's yeah. great. And it's the character you want to see die the worst. Yep. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> seeing seeing the fucking mini John Mulaney get that brutal of a mm. death was so satisfying. Mm. That doesn't go in there. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah, it, it becomes a Friday of the 13th movie or an Eli Roth movie. He makes the motherfucker gargle fire. <laughs> yeah. By John Mulaney slowly becoming Fred Schneider from the B-52. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't go in there. I'm new in town. <laughs> it's, it's been a long episode. We're going to let it go. <laughs> We're letting it slide. Going back to the out of focus or cut uh, the scene because sure. it's Corey. No one cares. Mm-hmm. I understand that design, but if you want to put Michael skills in focus, you can't do that, but then only have Michael kill three Two to people. Three people. Throughout the yeah. Entire- yeah. It's hey, you know what? It's almost like it's not a good movie. Um, <laughs> you know what? That's why we're here. <laughs> the next kill is in focus as hell, mm-hmm. and it's nuts. With his mom? No. Well, oh yeah, that's right. The, there's the mom kill. Because that's another incel move here. Got to right. kill your parents. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I do like the dad seeing Corey with the Michael Myers mask. Yeah. yeah. Like it's a good moment because he he's 
in disbelief and then immediately shot in the fucking head. Yeah. But it, I don't understand why he's like posing there, holding yeah. the mask. Like, I, I don't get that. I don't either. It's it's for him to do the teleportation thing right sure. after. Yeah. So the it, the power's in the mask. I guess. <laughs> that's right. So that's how he can teleport and shit. Oh, I, I, brought, I brought this up when I saw it. Uh, to the people I saw it with, mm-hmm. Corey is a fucking trooper because imagine how bad that mask smells. Oh, oh yeah. my god! <laughs> maybe maybe it's like COVID and you lose your sense of smell whenever you put Michael's mask on. <laughs> like it's forty years old and Michael's rocked that in a sewer for the past four years. Hell yeah, stankin' and in a house fire. Don't forget about stankin'. that too. Stankin'. Yeah, but I wish if the stepdad saw Corey, we like. With the mask, now that Corey just killed these kids, and you're like, you know what? I'm not, su- you know, what? I'm not surprised. Like that checks out. Yeah. <laughs> Your mom's fucking weird. Not, he pulls a blanket over his his lap like, <laughs> slowly. Not what I, n- not what I meant by fine love. Not what I meant. <laughs> well, you found it, kid. We, okay, this this DJ death, I I don't like. Oh I'm gonna man. Be honest, but, well. I like the death. I don't like the tongue stuff. Yeah. Oh, see, I think that's a great gag. Yeah, I loved it. I think I like it. I loved it. I don't like it because it feels like it's from a different movie. That's this feels true. Like it's like from an Eli Roth movie or that's something. That's true. I think it would have been better if he but like- But it's also not Michael. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah, it's, Michael would never do that shit. I guess. Oh, I think Michael would. Michael put- Michael was doing all kinds of arts and crafts. Oh, yeah. Michael posed big and small John. Yeah, I. but I think it should have been something- I 100% buy this. It should have been something more like he puts something down his throat or something mm. than cutting the tongue off i just i it's too much for me did you guys notice that like the after his like jaw is busted he looks like the aftermath of one of the mask kills in uh halloween 3 yeah uh-huh yeah 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 i can see it i just i think the record skip is so good yeah i, I, I love it <laughs> yeah it's good and, and it cuts to allison listening to the radio and the cramps keep skipping yeah. i think that's just <laughs> that's a great gag then we we go Lori's fake suicide, I think, is the stupidest shit. I'm not buying any version no. of this. No. Nope. nope, not at all. It's really stupid from her perspective, too, because she has the line, did you really think I'd kill myself? Right. And Corey's got to be like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> I wasn't in here. Yeah. And also, she has no reaction to, like, sh- does she know it's Corey in the mask? Yeah. Right. She has no reaction to seeing nothing. The that fucking mask again. Yeah. She sits down, makes sure her manuscript's in order. She tearfully rips off her necklace. For who? She Calls in a suicide. For who? Who is it, supposed yeah, to be if, seeing if this? this? Is if this is meant to be a fake out, then she needs to wait until someone's fucking watching. Yeah, because I had assumed that he was in there. Like from the moment she turned off the lights and she kind of stood there and it was quiet. Uh huh. Then she grabbed the liquor, went upstairs. I thought from that moment she kind of knew someone was in the house. True, but you know you the way you make this work better is she takes off the necklace, calls in the suicide attempt downstairs, mm-hmm. then goes upstairs closes the door, gets her gun. Yeah. Because that way, Corey's like, okay, she's going upstairs. She's going to be alone. That's where it has the, the moment. Right. But doing it all out of purview from him makes no sense. And I think there is a scene, like, if you look in the back, there's like a shadow in the... Mm. Now, it, again, it's still played horribly, yeah. guys. I'm not trying to... I know. Right. You're playing devil's advocate. I It's a <laughs> it's faulty, but I can't hear you. I want to say like in the light, you see like a shadow through the rafters of the stairs or something like coming up the stairs. You do, mm-hmm. but that's, that's after she's already made the call and all that good stuff. It's not enough. Right. No. You're right. Yeah, it's not enough. And also... When, like, he opens the door and she has a whole line of, did you really think I'd kill myself, motherfucker? Yeah. Like, move. Yeah, he in stays there. five seconds it takes her to say that. She's like, pointing a gun at you, my dude, and she's already fired it. Like, you dodged a <laughs> shotgun earlier. Yeah. yeah. What the fuck? I don't understand her plan here. Nope. She shoots him twice, then empties her gun, and then is like, I want you to kill me. Yeah. W- what? Yeah. What's the plan? I think it was supposed to be, see... I had thought, I was, yeah, I agree with you because I was like, okay, maybe she wants to look like a. Uh-huh. You see that in movies where they make it look like a. There was a gunfight, right? Yeah. To make it look like the murder was self defense, but no, this is actual self defense, though. <laughs> Again, I think that ties into the possible original ending. Yeah, because I see s- parts of this make sense if her plan is to commit suicide by serial killer. I was gonna say, if they would have had some line of like, I can't do it, I need you to do that, it. That, or if, if Corey does kill her, and then Allison comes in and uh-huh. sees her dead, it's like, it gives Allison the motivation to then take up the mantle and like, 
justify everything Lori was saying, but right. none of that comes into play. B- but then we don't need Lori to say, did you really think I was going to kill myself? Like, yeah. It all contradicts itself. Yes. And and it is a good idea in terms of getting the cops there of like, Lori Short's going to commit suicide. Holy totally. shit. And we got to get there. Like, that makes sense. I appreciated that. She's called in a suicide. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like after, like after like she does the whole fake out I, and it cuts to like, it kind of, you know, cuts to like Frank being like, oh, it's like, she called in a suicide. Like, I thought that it, they were going to reveal, like, that she had, like, her and Frank had set up some, like, code word. Yeah, like, oh, I love if that. If I call yes. saying I'm going to kill myself, it means Michael's back. That like, that's good. what I thought. And then it didn't happen. Would it gave Frank something to fucking do. And that would have <laughs> built a relationship. Yeah. And I think this is just, again, indicative of how many different writers there yep. were and the fact that they kept tweaking the ending yep. up until release. My buddy made a comment. He's like, someone typed in halloween sequel in an ai generator yeah. <laughs> and this is what it came out with yeah yeah well, i will say because the like david gordon green with danny mcbride obviously involved in all three mm-hmm. but the two other writers credited to ends were not involved in halloween or halloween kills yeah and it fucking shows purvis and wade <laughs> <laughs> it is purvis and wade holy shit can you imagine uh <laughs> no we, then we get some more incel behavior here with if i can't have her no one can and he immediately kills himself mm-hmm. he can't even do that right no now. <laughs> and i get it I get it's to frame Lori and turn Allison against her, uh-huh. but it's still stupid because this works for all of about, I don't know, two minutes. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. But before we before we move to that, all this fucking work, all this build up of we've been following Corey, his shitty fucking story uh-huh. for him to just stab himself just to turn his Allison against Lori. I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Uh-huh. Yeah, we've been so invested in it. You finally got me somewhat invested. I want to see Lori kill this guy. Yep. No, he doesn't himself. Well, it's also, it's like, bro, did you not watch screen? Like, stab yourself in the stomach, man. <laughs> yeah. Come on. So, Michael Michael didn't show him how to do it. Yeah, <laughs> I guess not. And I honestly missed it the first time, uh-huh. but the, the radio station being on fire. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, so that makes no sense then, because that means Corey set that place on fire. Got all the way across town. <laughs> and well, not only that, but if that's the case, that's right where Allison stops, and uh-huh. then she gets the phone call. So he kind of set himself up for failure, like, right. unintentionally, obviously, because he couldn't have planned that. But it's like, dude, <laughs> you suck. <laughs> to me, I was like, okay, maybe set it on fire to draw the police to the fire, so he's going on these murders or whatever, it's going to be easier. Mm-hmm. Or the tongue somehow, like a Final Destination effect. <laughs> oh, it, got, it, was, it was rolling around on the vinyl that was, you know, playing for the cramps and then it rolled off the floor. Uh-huh. Yeah. It fell on a surge protector and yeah, because it was and wet the blood. The blood and then, yeah. And then, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I see this. Yeah, this all tracks. Yeah. This is good. This is good screenwriting. <laughs> what's, not, what's not good screenwriting is this this whole third act mm. because killing Michael felt like it did. Nobody cared. No, like, I don't think the screenwriters really cared. Allison, Lori, nobody seemed like it was of any importance to kill Michael. It's so quick. Yeah. Yeah. And we've seen almost all of it in the trailer. It's the third act from a different movie. Yes. Like it's, it's an afterthought. Yep. It is. It's almost like they were like, oh shit, we forgot this is the third movie and it's literally called Halloween ends. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, you remember that time she was in a closet in the first one? Let's do that. Let's have her use a sewing needle. She knits in her kitchen yep. so that'll be in the kitchen yep uh we use a bunch of kitchen <laughs> knives because that's what michael likes uh-huh. yeah and, and you put kitchen knives in the kitchen right uh-huh. you put there. kitchen knives in every fucking drawer in this kitchen horrible horrible knife care in this fucking movie <laughs> yeah do not just leave your knives no. loose, loose knives in a in drawer. drawer you psychopath there's a, she opens every drawer in this house and they all have knives put use a fucking knife block <laughs> yeah yep you fucking ingrates yep. you know what else is in the kitchen the refrigerator oh, yeah. Yeah. refrigerator yeah we gotta use that we're gonna drop a samsung on his knee <laughs> she threw everything at him but the kitchen sink <laughs> uh we gotta talk about the fact that michael gets spooked by a uh, microwave dinner oh, yeah. i thought the microwave thing was kind of funny <laughs> chekhov's pie <laughs> yeah because they did they definitely did that earlier in the movie as uh-huh. a transition another weird transition but you know michael's just like oh shit oh, i haven't fuck. seen one of those since the 70s <laughs> <laughs> all right so what i do like about it is how Lori flips a switch uh-huh from I'm moving on, Lori, to 2018, Lori. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Jesus Christ, it took you 45 seconds to get that sentence out. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> that was longer than the fight. <laughs> but, okay, so she walks slowly to the kitchen after Michael kills Corey and all this stuff. He puts his mask on, does all this thing. Uh-huh. How does she start that microwave without it beeping? So <laughs> She's got the teleportation powers like yeah, everyone else does in this movie. So 
Either that or she started the microwave 20 minutes ago before <laughs> she shot Corey. Maybe she did. Maybe yeah. she's one of those. Very lucky. She's so lucky. Maybe it's one of those microwave dinners you got to put in the microwave for <laughs> half an hour. Yeah, you got to take the take the film off. You got to stir yeah. the potatoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so anyways, Lori's into, in the pantry, I guess, right? <laughs> Lori's in the pantry with Michael. <laughs> <laughs> because this shot was really cool, but. Was it? <laughs> what I didn't understand was she's on one side. The camera panned from Lori and then it pans over to the door where you see Michael walking up and you see the fire extinguisher. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And then she busts out the with hit him with the fire. I was like, how does she grab that fucking fire extinguisher without him knowing? Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, there's the whole microwave, but he looked for two seconds. And there's no way she grabbed that. <laughs> I thought you said Michael wave. <laughs> <laughs> I like that she also kind of gives away where she is because mm-hmm. the little uh, thing is is knocking against the blinds yeah. and she stops and he's like, hey, somebody oh. stop <laughs> this shit over the wall. Who? Oh. Oh, me? Yeah. <laughs> Michael's much more breathy in this movie. Yeah. Like during this well, fight. I mean, he's fucking old, bro. Well, he's old as fuck. He's so old. He's old. You know, he's asthmatic. <laughs> when, they, when they take that mask off, he looks like Splinter. Oh, like, yeah. it's fucked. <laughs> he looks like David Lopan. Like, motherfucker got stabbed in the lungs and shot in a bunch like uh-huh. motherfuckers gasping i also like that that like when he takes his mask off either he has terrible genetics or <laughs> he's been shaving because he has just the babyest little goatee just a wisp yeah so either he's been shaving and that's just the stubble growing back in or that's all he's got <laughs> he gets one hair per kill <laughs> well half his face is burnt yeah that's true that's true I, I, so <laughs> when i saw the way Lori pulled down that refrigerator mm-hmm. i thought she was climbing on top of it me too so, <laughs> me too <laughs> I was so hoping she was going to fucking elbow drop this dude. Off the top rope. <laughs> oh my. I was like, she's about to give him the people's fucking elbow. Watch out, watch my out, watch God, out. That's Lori's music. <laughs> speaking, speaking of Lori climbing on into and on top of things, I got a note about that later on at the end of this movie. Oh, but boy. Same. No, it's, it's a pretty... It's a pretty great moment of tension, too, with the sewing needle. I like that it kind of gets her in the temple a little bit. Gets her yeah. In the, yeah, or in the eardrum yeah. or something. Yeah. yeah. This overhead shot of Michael pinned to the table, and he's just like, Ugh. struggling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fucking struggling. He's getting the piss shivers again. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> Not the shivers I wanted. She cuts his throat. Then she she 13 reasons why is him. She stabs him in the side or the lungs. Or- oh, right. Well, she stabs him in the hand. She stabs him in the side, in the chest. Yeah. And then she's like, you know, he, he does the sit up thing, tries to choke her. Which launches her. Mm-hmm. And she's like, go ahead and do it. Oh, my God. When she when she stabs him through the hand and then uses the skillet yep. to like drum it in. It's oh, the good. panhammer. That's I real good. Love I loved that. the panhammer. That's why we keep cast iron around. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Soap has never touched that pan. Uh-uh. I'm like, Lori, you got to stab this guy in the fucking head. <laughs> yeah. You can't, like, you know better. And then I, Allison coming in and breaking the arm. Oh, my God. That's hilarious. It's good. <laughs> oh, buddy, was that a reshoot? <laughs> yeah, oh, I imagine. Again, so it's like no emotional weight of seeing Michael again. Nope. Yeah. Like, no, she just walks in, which I, I don't mind. Here's the thing. I don't really mind because it's like, you killed my entire family. They're, we're not talking about this. I'm breaking your arm. Yeah. And that's what she did. Well, it's a good payback for her, her him being the reason she broke her leg in the last movie. Yeah. <laughs> it's a nice little touch. But also, she choked him. <laughs> he choked her with the hand where that was split. And all I can think of was, ew. Yeah. <laughs> like, don't touch me with that. Yep. I just, I felt nothing. I felt nothing either. Nothing with them cutting his wrists, slitting yeah. his throat. Nothing. Not not a thing. I felt grossed out by the wrist cutting. Yeah. Because I was just like, come on, guys. Like, There's what? so much blood. The more holes. Excuse me? The more blood, I <laughs> no, guess. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Let's unpack this. No, no, no. I, stop there. You had me. Say less. You had me. <laughs> Different kind of podcast, JT. <laughs> Halloween 12, the holes of Michael Myers. <laughs> Sorry, that's for the parody that's, that's coming out. Hey, you know what? I'd watch that movie a lot more than I'd probably watch this. <laughs> oh my god i do like the idea though of draining him of all this blood because uh-huh. i'm like do everything you can yeah, go for it you've done everything else but also cut his fucking head off i'm going uh-huh. rob schneider right here before you do anything else no she learned that doesn't work <laughs> that's fair <laughs> she tried that in h2o he's gonna swap bodies yeah in another multiverse and uh, again saying the quiet part out loud here guys the cops telling everyone strong radio silence that's a command oh, man and, and like to your point mally Stop transporting this fucking guy. Yeah, like, stop moving him. It works out this time. They tie him to the top of the car like they're the Griswolds on oh, <laughs> Christmas, Christmas vacation. Yeah. <laughs> it's so fucking fun. This funeral procession. Honestly, no. I I love that it turns into National Lampoon's Halloween towards <laughs> the end here. <laughs> I 
can't believe the audacity this movie has to bring back all these characters as if they're legacy characters from the first movie. They bring yeah. back Julian. Julian, Julian. walking alone. Ooh. The return of the king. King <laughs> fucking Julian. The sheriff and all these characters are like, you, we brought back the old favorites. I'm like, motherfucker, it was two movies ago. Yeah. We should have seen the kid that wanted to do ballet from the first movie. Yeah, and he's yeah. just in like a neck brace. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, undo undo all the kills from the last two movies. <laughs> Mr. Tavoli, the other insane assault, yeah. he's back. My thing is, I'm like, I'm like, did you roll Sandra the whole fucking <laughs> oh way God, here? Right? There's so many people here. Word gets out fast in this town. Dustin, can you take this scene and edit over uh you're the voice from Hot Rod? <laughs> yes. <laughs> 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 Nah, fuck that. <laughs> Br- fucking cut in We Are the World. <laughs> we, are the, we are the children. If I'm going to be cutting in anything, I'm going to be cutting in that guy from Spider-Man 2 going, careful with him, he's a hero. Oh God, sp- <laughs> I, I literally said they Spider-Man 2'd him. Yes. Yeah. Body surfing this guy to the front. Oh, Holy yeah. shit. The editing in this scene is so odd because Lori steps into this fucking thing and then they show Allison hovering over the odd switch. And I was yeah. like, what are they doing? Yeah, <laughs> someone's going to bump into Allison. <laughs> yeah, Lori just is like, I'm taking you with me, motherfucker. Yeah, we're both going to hell tonight, motherfucker. <laughs> For about two seconds, I thought that's where they were going right? with me it. Too. Yeah. And it's- I was like, um... That's the worst possible way to kill yourself. That's a really bad one. I thought it would have been fucking hilarious. I would have I would have been cackling. This the scene is played <laughs> so straight, and how can they not see that Michael's head busting like a papaya <laughs> as anything other than high camp? I thought this was fucking awesome. Yeah. Like, it's campy as shit. I love the practicals, to be honest. But it's so silly. Oh, it's, it is. It is silly. But man, it was so funny watching his head pop. It's silly as fuck. It would have been a lot more work, but you could have done the same thing in the kitchen sure <laughs> you know like but i yeah i do like that they this is like the one smart thing they finally do like because uh-huh. everyone always talks about this in horror movies of like to get rid of the body yeah. just get rid of the body make it mulch and they fucking do it dude i thought they were gonna go full fargo with it and have like the blood <laughs> oh. the jetting out just jetting out the other end oh my god how funny would that have been well see they drive up with him strapped to the car and i thought they were just gonna drive the car into a compactor Ooh, <laughs> good too that's yeah, yeah. Guys, I got news for you, too. Uh, mm. Evil died tonight. It did. Of a bitch. There you go. We did it. <sighs> Huzzah. Can we get a boo right there? <laughs> this movie having the fucking balls to do the same thing we did in the original with look at all the places we've been, like, in the daytime here. I hated it. I actually did like that yep. because there's no breathing over this one. Yep. I, it were, that's the one callback that really worked for me. I love that it does that, but yeah, it's completely silent. I thought that was great. I didn't like it. I'm I just thought it was too much. I told I mean that's totally valid. I it's one of the few callbacks that worked for me. It didn't earn it. Sure. It didn't earn it for me and because the, this whole third act was an afterthought. Michael has two to three kills in this movie uh-huh. yeah. and Lori is sidelined almost as much as she is in Halloween Kills. Mm-hmm. And it's a Corey movie yep. for most of the runtime. Yeah. It didn't earn this at all. But I, I don't know. I, when, the, when the credits started rolling, I'm like, how did we get from the 2018 one to here? Like, there is no connective tissue. Yeah. She barely reflects on Karen in this movie. Dustin, she's her background on her phone. <laughs> That's true. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm, I missed that. Jesus. <laughs> I rewatched Kills and I rewatched this one and both of them have somehow retroactive. I mean, I, I, I voiced my issues with 2018, but I like it's retroactively made me have more problems with that one. Mm-hmm. It, it just almost makes the problems of 2018 feel more glaring where I'm just like, OK, well, yeah, now I see the weakness of this vision yeah and it i don't know it just everything that annoyed me about 2018 feels amplified <laughs> to me it feels like two other similar scenarios which is i like the force awakens but uh-huh. it was clear that they didn't have a plan after that sure and for me it feels like they didn't have a plan for these two either after the success of 2018 and i i think i said this on twitter but i haven't seen a director just completely undo all the goodwill they built up with that 2018 one to here like yeah. the closest thing I could think of was when M. Night did Unbreakable <laughs> yeah. and then Split and then Glass and like boy you undid diminishing returns <laughs> undid so much uh-huh. like goodwill it's I don't know it's it's upsetting I'm upset because 
this is my favorite horror franchise out of all the popular ones. Mm -hmm. And you did so well with 2018. Like that was a worthy successor to the original. And they they work good. And it has me dreading his Exorcist movies. I know. I I just just have a plan. That's all. If you're going to do this thing with Corey, it needs some whiff of that before this. Right. And I think if you watch the original and then watch 2018, that is a perfect book in. You don't need to keep going. It'd be like if we got to Rise of Skywalker and now Babu Frick is the main character. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. I think you're right. Yeah. Hey. Hey. <laughs> no, I love Babu Frick. He's the best part of that movie. He really fucking is. He really is. Well, like I said, I, I'm upset. I, I'm, I don't think this movie is going to you know, be um, reevaluated later on and be looked at as a better movie than it is. Mm-hmm. I think it is what it is. Like, I do think it plays better the second time, but yeah. it's still not even 50% good. It's it's still bottom. And, and I got to say, like, I can see why there are people who are grooving to this movie. Sure. It's just 100% not what I, I was hoping for. And- it's not the time for it. This is a movie you do either before this felt like another reboot yeah. or something yeah. like I, I don't know it's it's odd it doesn't feel like the the capper to this trilogy no i agree it should if they wanted to do all this it should have been a part one and part two yeah or something or it should have been its own standalone thing or this should have been like Hol- rob zombies halloween three yeah. or something like it michael v laurie dawn of cory yeah. <laughs> 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 or just fit all that Corey shit in like the first third of the movie and <laughs> sure. give us Michael for the rest. Do a fake out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do a fake out. I'm fine with that. No, I, it's upsetting. Well, it's, it's, I saw this thing earlier where someone was like, uh, can you imagine if like the internet existed when Friday the 13th, a new beginning came out? And I was like, yeah, that movie sucks too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much all the Friday the 13th movies suck. If we're being honest, I can look, on, I can look on the internet now and yeah. people are still saying that yeah. that movie sucked. <laughs> it does suck. Yes. It hasn't changed. Yeah. It's still terrible. <laughs> One quick thing I forgot to mention about the doctor in this. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't realize it till like the second watch. That's the fucking doctor that, the doc, the dude in the doctor costume and his wife in the nurse outfit uh-huh. are complaining about and kills. Oh, yeah. so I heard about that. Yeah. I didn't realize that at the, the first time. That's funny. Julian's non parents yes. left the hospital they work at. Yes. Got it. <laughs> well, worked. Yeah, worked. worked. Fair, yeah. They're dead as fuck. <laughs> By the way, I see people on Twitter re- trying to reevaluate the nurse kill. Uh-huh. Well, I guess she's the doctor. Her death from the last movie. That's still the best part of that movie. Oh, boy. <laughs> Sorry. It's so funny. It's so good. Hawkins lied. He said Michael doesn't use guns. but yeah. <laughs> Te- Well, technically. technically. Yeah, technically. He knew what that door was going to do, though. He's like, I'm going to use this gun to kill this girl. Michael doesn't use guns. <laughs> Why did he sound like a Western? <laughs> That's Will Patton. He's always like right on the edge of sounding like he's from Dubai. <laughs> yep. So. Do you want to hear what I heard about what was most likely the original ending? Yeah, yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, they, I mean, they reshot this ending in like June or July or something because mm-hmm. this movie shot like production started in like January. Mm-hmm. Like they shot like this was shot and reshot all this year. Mm-hmm. So the original ending was like so Corey still died, Michael died. Where it changes is that Allison does not come back. Oh. Okay. There's no big funeral procession. Mm-hmm. They don't Spider-Man to him. Like, <laughs> like Lori gets rid of the body, but I don't remember how I feel like she like cream like burns it, cremates it, something like that. Mm. So and then like Lori writing in her book, the whole like evil doesn't die, it just changes shape, is still the same. The doorbell rings and it's not Frank, it's Allison. Uh oh. You can actually, I think you can see the shot of her answering the door and it being Allison in one of the trailers or TV mm-hmm. spots. Mm-hmm. So, like, they have some kind of conversation, blah, 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 like Allison saying lawyers write about Corey, all that shit. Mm-hmm. And, like, basically, like, Lori looks like super sad and all this shit, I guess, the whole time. And, like, you can tell, like, something's still going on with her. And she lunges at Allison. No. And, like, kind of starts to strangle her and then, like, comes to her senses, blah, blah, blah. And then, like, they kind of, like, it's a whole, like, what the fuck moment. So, like, she yells at Allison, like, leave Haddonfield, like, get out of here, go away. And Allison leaves. And uh, Lori just, like, slams the door and kind of has, like, this scared look on her face. And that's, like, where the voiceover of, like, the evil never dies. It just changes shape. Oh, Terrible. my God. The end. Yeah, awful. This is better. 
And so that that thing earlier between Lori and Corey yeah. about the creeping evil, like being dangerous, that was going to apply to Lori. Well, and he also has that interesting line where he goes like, are you going to do it or should I? Yeah. And you almost think he's talking to either her or Michael. And mm-hmm. it's, it's such a weird, ambiguous moment. Yeah. Yeah. Um, apparently... From the rumors, uh, everyone involved hated that fucking yeah. ending. <laughs> Here's the thing. If we're doing a Halloween movie, mm-hmm. you got to stop with this. Everybody else inheriting Michael's evil. Right. The whole point of that first movie is he is the embodiment of evil. Yeah. Yep. And he's unkillable. We are talking about evil on two legs. <laughs> exactly. So I don't give a fuck if someone else is trying to be him like Corey is or someone inherits it. Like it's that's dumb. Sure. It kind of works in four, but even still not really. Mm hmm. Like, it's just a good ending. But in terms of storytelling, that's not what I want. Right. That's any other franchise. That's Chucky. Yeah. Chucky does that. If they did anything, it should be like, I guess, instead of it being Michael is the embodiment of evil, but the shape itself is the evil. Okay. Mm. And I guess, like, the evil, obviously, this body's breaking down. Mm -hmm. Like, he... Michael is old, blah, 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 somehow slowly, methodically takes over Corey somehow in some way. Even a line like that, that would work. Yeah. Not, I'm not saying it's good. Yeah, no, it's not good. But <laughs> I was just trying to think, like, how could this be better? You thought of it probably more than the, these two non-writers. <laughs> 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 yeah. Right. Anyway, um, yeah, that's that's all I got to say. I, I didn't like the movie. I, we'll go ahead and do recommendations now. Do any of us recommend it? <sighs> that's hard, man. Yeah. Like, I, I feel like... Just to see it through, yep. sure. But I, I don't know that I'd say, like, you should watch this a bunch of times like yeah. we have. Yeah. <sighs> I'll echo that and say it's tough because I almost always say you got to see every Halloween movie. Just because even the bad ones. Yeah, I, I love these movies. Even the bad ones are fun, usually. This is rough, even by this franchise's standards. Uh, I think it's well shot, well paced. It's mostly well edited. Um, but the plot is just bad. The plot is bad. Mm-hmm. And... This trilogy, or whatever you want to call it now, it's it went off the rails so damn hard, yeah. and it's really disappointing that this is ends. Like, this is Halloween ends. It's in the title. I mean, I know there's going to be more Halloween movies in the future, mm-hmm. but whatever. I just, I don't think Jamie Lee Curtis is coming back. Oh, no. I don't see that. I think legitimately this time is- No chance. Yeah. yeah. And this is where we ended it. That's what's so disappointing about it. Like, this is the end for Lori. Yep. Again, I mentioned this when we talked about the other ones. It was teed up so high for 2018. Yep. Yeah. I think that movie, where it did have its flaws, it was at its fundamental core was a Halloween movie. Yep. In all the sense of the word. Oh, I mean, it was easily the best Halloween movie in 30 years, right? Like <laughs> It truly understood what it meant to be a Halloween movie and to be a direct sequel to the original. Yeah. And then you had Kills that was just a, if a horror movie was just a fucking balls to the wall action movie, just, mm-hmm. and, and then you got this and you were hoping it was going to get reeled back and it just didn't. Yeah. It's on par for me, the fact that we won't get Jamie Lee Curtis uh, that we won't get to see Leia in another Star Wars movie. Sure. Like, they they had that opportunity to do something with her in those, that trilogy, and they didn't do anything with it. You're never going to get uh, 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 Harrison Ford in any of those movies either. And, like, you had the opportunity, and you didn't you didn't plan. And that's what's really upsetting. It's like, you bought it for the... You bought the IP, and you didn't care what to do with it. I mean, again, I don't think this all is on David Gordon Green's feed. Sure. I think... What's his name? Malek has a lot to say about it, too. And I don't know, man. I just think it's a missed opportunity. It really is. I I will say, I think it is really ballsy the way that they... Because Malek Akkad's big thing going into this trilogy is you can't unambiguously kill Michael Myers in a movie. Yep. And he let them do it. Yep. Yep, he sure did. I didn't like how it played out, but not at all. <laughs> I wonder if he's kind of ending, like he's kind of done with it too. Then maybe. I mean, uh, Jason Blum said that they were only contracted for three movies. Right. They did their three movies. They have no idea if they're gonna get a new contract or anything. So who knows? And I mean, the only thing you can do is a reboot, right? Are we are we really gonna go into the the Jason goes to hell thing where yes, Michael died, but his spirit went mm. on to someone else? Like I don't want that. Oh, I think if we get another one, there's no way it continues this timeline. No. no. Not a chance. Unless if Allison's pregnant. Oh, oh God, God damn it. Fuck. God, fuck. You're right. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Oh. A seed of Corey. Corey. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. No. Oh, no. Halloween seeds. Corey in the house. Oh, uh, Corey in the house. No, thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> Mally, do you recommend it at all? Yeah. Oh. I feel you. Yeah. I feel you. Yeah. No, I mean... 
yeah, you watch it because sure. there is there's some good stuff in here. Right? Like agree. they kill a child immediately. <laughs> I I definitely like I softened on this after meeting the movie kind of on its own terms. I on my second viewing, I liked it more. Yeah, I still just think that the ideas that I like are good ideas that are still not being carried out yeah, to exactly. their proper conclusion. <laughs> exactly why I don't think a reevaluation is going to fix it. Again, like if they had planned this. Especially like with kills and ends, mm-hmm. the fact that they announced them at the same time, I'm like, y'all should have wrote these a little tighter together. Yep. Mm-hmm. Like 2018 kind of stands on its own and that's fine. But like, like in my reimagining that I made up in my head the other night, like <laughs> 2018 basically stays the same. Like you don't need to change much. Nope. Sure. Like I'm going right, to, I'm going to, I'm going to dig into this a little bit. Do it. So the big, like you need to establish Corey earlier. Yeah. Uh-huh. Like. 2018 or kills introduce him as like the you know kind of the same like he's the weird kid that like accidentally killed the kid he was babysitting mm-hmm. put Corey at the party in the first one yeah like honestly get rid of cameron for the most part we don't really need cameron yeah he didn't serve that much of a purpose i, I would be fine with even this movie being the cold the same cold open but we knew Corey before then right yeah, yeah like you kind of hint at Corey's backstory yep in the other ones yep and then in this one show it to us yeah right. like oh fuck like like don't like you know kind of hint at what happened to him like you know he got in some shit like a kid died blah 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 yeah and then hit us with that cold open on this one so it's like oh fuck yeah. like okay that's what happened okay fucking wild that's why i think a recut of this trilogy could work well and then like obviously like the whole cory and michael dynamic needs to be reworked like <laughs> make it more like give us some kind of hint in 2018 or kills that like he is not sympathetic towards michael but like something to, like kind of start setting up his turn in the earlier movies yeah and then the way you do like the whole michael disappearing thing like so michael disappeared at the end of kills disappeared for four years and then instead of Corey just stumbling upon him maybe like show that he's been leading like random people to him this yeah. whole time yeah. mm-hmm. and then i don't know like he has some there's some kind of bad blood between him and Lori or something like she does something in 2018 or kills that kind of, you know, steers him wrong. So he decides to get his ultimate revenge by leading Michael to her. Yeah. Again, you could have done where Allison and Corey like Cameron dies in 2018. Uh, Corey and Allison are friends. Will they won't they in kills? And in this one, when the accident with the kid happened, Lori's like, you're not to talk to him anymore. And. That's why he hates Lori. Something like that. Yeah. Either these work. Like this whole idea needs more. Like we need to spend more time on this. Yeah. Um, Just like they should have fucking spent more time on this. (laughs) Because then I think the Corey Michael like thing could like you can make that work. You just have to. You can't introduce it in the third fucking movie. But the one thing you cannot do is that he. No, you can have Michael on the back of the motorcycle. (laughs) That's fine. (laughs) Dustin. Yeah, that's happening. The one thing you cannot do is have Michael somehow transfer his powers to Corey like it does in this movie. No, you cannot do that. Mm-hmm. It's, it's got to be Corey making the decision to do that right. on his own. But we can't have Michael coming, right? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I keep mean, piss shivers in. I'm <laughs> oh, sorry. 100. Okay. Okay. Good. 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 I'm glad we. Yeah. Yeah. Piss shivers stay. How else is he supposed to react to his juice? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and like as far as like how Corey gets the mask, maybe like like have like maybe the end of kills or like mm-hmm. a flashback at the beginning show it like. Like, Michael just leaves the fucking mask. Right. Like, he ditches the fucking mask, which I don't know if he would do. Well, instead of putting it back on, after they take it off of him and kills, and he, he kill, he, instead of putting it back on and everyone allowing him to do that around him. <laughs> well, I mean, these movies placed some wild importance on the mask. That's yeah. true. You know, like, the, the first movie begins with... The mask's very presence causing a yard full of patients to start screaming. Yeah. And dogs to start barking. Well, kind of like they could, dude, they could have even brought back the original 2018 ending where Michael like stumbles away to die. Right. Yeah. Like reveal that Michael stumbled away to die. That is what I expected. This re- I expected this movie to reveal that he uh, died right after killing Karen. Yeah. Mm. Like have like reveal that he was on like he was dying and that's when Corey Corey found him. That's yeah. good. That's how Corey takes the mask. Yeah. But then Corey, Corey starts to go a little fucking crazy, you know? Once he gets a little sugar in it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Once he gets a s- spoonful of that peanut butter. Oh, God. <laughs> so we find out that it 
it's the mask that like is turning people crazy. And then we found out that the mask is made by Silver, Silver Shamrock. Shamrock. Oh, See, oh, dude, there you guys, go. we wrote them. We fixed it. <laughs> call, call them. We fixed it. Get Tom Atkins on the phone. They took one shot. Because I'm just saying, Corey wasn't teleporting until he Wait, put on hang the mask. On. JT, shut the fuck up for a minute. What are you <laughs> saying, oh, Excuse Dustin? me. Excuse me. They sorry. They took the one shot from the original where Lori pulls the mask off of him, and he's like freaking out to put it back on, mm-hmm. and they interpreted that to like, oh, Michael can't do anything without his mask on. I'm yeah, like, right. well. I, is that it or is yeah. he just well he's got Jarvis in there like yeah. <laughs> to help him make his plans oh my god if you, there was like in these new movies from Jarvis POV <laughs> we see Michael's HUD <laughs> there's an AI this Corey whole... is now approaching <laughs> that's why he turns on <laughs> like what if in ends he put the mask on and it's fucking like Paul Bettany voices <laughs> no fucking I about said Jai Courtney but uh, <laughs> J- Jude J- James Jude, Jude, J- Jude Courtney the, the guy that plays Michael yeah, yeah. it's his voice mm. James Jude Courtney yes thank you it's, it's James Jude Courtney's voice guiding Corey. A better movie. <laughs> well, <laughs> a, it's a different movie. It's very different. We're running long here. JT, do you recommend this movie? Yes or no? Um, One word. That's all I yeah. want. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, you could elaborate a little no, bit. No, I'm good, man. Go ahead. <laughs> like, we're, we're all completionists. Yeah. You have to watch it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. You gotta. And like I said, it's there's still a lot worse Halloween movies than this. Yeah. yeah. So well, there's a few worse Halloween movies than Fair this. Enough. According to the critics, Halloween too. Yeah. <laughs> well, the critics can be, the critics have been known to be wrong. Okay, we're going back to this. <laughs> I got more callbacks to Halloween two than this fucking movie. JT, what's up? <laughs> so what you're saying is we can do an episode on Halloween two sometime. We can't because I've tr- I've looked into it. <laughs> it doesn't like I've given up. It it doesn't qualify. I've tried to make it fit the mold. Right. It doesn't qualify. Okay. I could argue that it does, but I won't. Unless you're gonna be like, well, Loomis is dead. Oh no, Fuck, but you just did it yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're in baby anyways <laughs> let's get into prop cop maybe it's like an april fool's day once we could do halloween too, but that's all i got that's all i got plot twist rob zombies halloween too. <laughs> oh, i would be pissed if i sat down mally you get first pick because this is your movie so prop cop well, uh, they didn't fucking end up doing anything with it in the goddamn movie, so I'll take Corey's fucking motorcycle. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. That was on my list. All right, well, JT. Get fucked, Jimothy. Do you need more time or yep. you got a backup? I got a backup. I just can't remember it. Okay. Should we go to Nathan while you look? Or? Yep. Go to go to Nathan. Go ahead, Nathan. I got kind of a Mally answer. I I want the doctor's backyard. Oh, my God. I thought you were going to talk. take the kid's dead body. <laughs> <laughs> No, I want I want that fire pit. I want that heated pool. Okay. I'll just take that set. All right. She, ju- whenever I was watching, uh, saw it in theaters, Julie leaned over to me. She's like, that's a great backyard. Yes. And I had to look. I looked at her. I was like, I ain't got doctor money. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Hint, hint. I want a good backyard like that. <laughs> what about you, JT? I guess I'm gonna go with the, the scarecrow mask. Okay, nice. That's a pretty good one. It's good. It's nice. a good mask. Solid. But then Nathan's getting a whole pool, so I thought maybe <laughs> I could just get the tunnel to the sewer that leads. <laughs> oh, quick thought. Yeah. Because they show the mask is in Allison's bedroom. Um, the next morning. Mm-hmm. Do you think he wore it? Oh, oh Deering. Oh, I yes. can't imagine. Oh, you do? Yeah. Oh, I don't know if Allison would approve of that. <laughs> if Michael showed him how to do it. Oh, that's a good point. <laughs> Michael did it with the mask on. He's like, the, the trick is in the mask. You gotta wear. This. He's like, this is the only. Way I know how. Yeah. <laughs> Corey's like, I've seen Halloween six. I would so when you were with your niece, how did you <laughs> oh like my God. Oh boy? <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Well, I'm going to take, uh, there's not many props that I thought were worth it in this movie. Right. I'm going to take Lindsay's tarot cards. Okay. <laughs> because I don't know. Okay. That's all I got. Maybe that can of green beans that uh, Lori throws to Frank. <laughs> did Priscilla request those cards, Dustin? She did not, but that would be a decent gift. She doesn't like these movies, but... Uh, but yeah, I agree with her on this one. I could just lie to her. I'm like, yeah, they're just ordinary tarot cards. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> the last thing on my list... It like below the giant sewer tunnel was. The- <laughs> Wait, I'm sorry. You you wanted the entire sewer? Crazy tunnel. He wants Michael's lair. No, I was thinking. Okay, that came from. It was a piggyback on the pool that Nathan's getting. It could be like a slide <laughs> that goes into the pool. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. What about bit part, guys? And I guess I didn't explain prop cut very well for new listeners, but for bit part, at least, we look at all the extras that are in the movie and we recast them as ourselves. So a little minor role, preferably a non-named character. Yeah. Nathan, what about you? Who do you want to be as a bit part? I want to be the receptionist at the radio station Fuck. played by Darcy the Mail Girl from The Last Drive-In. So because- weird. So weird. Because I want <laughs> I want the camera to pan up to me in that outfit and let the audience <laughs> deal with it. <laughs> I like that idea. Uh, we can absolutely make that happen. <laughs> okay, I got one. Okay, go ahead, JT. 
the gas station attendant was like, "You're gonna buy something or what?" <laughs> All right, <laughs> yeah. I want I want to be the uh, the woman working the register in the grocery store that just has to listen to these two old people flirting <laughs> flirt with each other, and just eavesdrop. <laughs> yeah, just be like, Ugh. <laughs> anyway, I've learned the guitar and I'm starting to learn Japanese. And she's like, "I like your face," and the woman looks up like, "What?" I think that's <laughs> I love that moment. <laughs> and she's twirling her hair. It's uh-huh. adorable. Mally, what about you? The band geek's father. Oh, yes. good. Oh, you mean Ben Tramer? <laughs> yes. Ben Tramer. You hit a child. Good. I know. It's everything I've ever wanted in a role. <laughs> that, that's the perfect role for you, honestly. I'm going to be a great dad. <laughs> this part doesn't even seem necessary, but it's the whole crutch of the show. Mm. And we're we're breaking our kind of rule for the show and just making this one kind of fit into the mold for it. But mm-hmm. anyway, let's talk about server linings. I'll go last. All right. I'll go ahead and get mine out of the way. Allison got the fuck out of Dodge. (laughs) Even if Michael's dead and Corey's dead and all this shit's happening, like there's a lot of trauma that's unprocessed in this town. And I don't think Lori is going to be, even though Michael's dead, Mm -hmm. in that great of a shape moving forward. No pun intended. No pun intended. I knew you were going to say something. (laughs) Sorry. What about you, Nathan? Uh, Lori finished her book. Did she? I don't know. She said she did, but then she kept adding more chapters. So (laughs) who knows? I'm presuming she gets a decent book deal out of it. Oh, she is dead. Oh, yeah. Publishers are knocking down her door. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Until they read the manuscript and then they're like, what the fuck? Hang on. (laughs) Actually, the reboot of this is going to be an adaptation of Laurie Strode's novel. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I like that. It's gonna They're going to go super meta with it. It's going to be like a Shrek opening where they show the book opening and then you go into it. It's a picture book. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they've got Scout Taylor Compton playing old Laurie. Oh, there you <laughs> go. She she had some liberties with the events that actually happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or um, Halloween in Japan. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yes. Japan. Fuck yeah. Michael Myers are surrounded by neon lights. I think I like that. That's pretty cool. Halloween cherry blossoms. They, that's where the cherry blossoms come from. Yeah. Oh, my God. We almost got the MTV Halloween. Now we can get the anime Halloween. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Which, if you haven't seen the Japanese poster of the original Halloween, look it up. It's JT, we are running so long. We can't be talking about posters. Sorry. Um, Lindsay. <laughs> Lindsay, uh-huh. yeah, she has a. I guess she has a successful business with the bar and had nothing to do with this movie. If she lived, yeah, yeah, she didn't even had nothing to do with this entire story. Not at all. Nothing. Also, apparently, the reason she because they God damn it, we're running. <laughs> the reason she d- just kind of disappears out of the movie is because she was busy filming Real Housewives mm-hmm. while they were doing reshoots. All right, all right. What's your silver lining? I know y'all expect me to say that fucking kid died, uh-huh. uh, which I mean, yeah, <laughs> but also Allison, I think her next relationship will not be with a fucking creepy incel dude. I hope <laughs> not. Jesus Christ. I hope not. Uh, we don't know. She deserves better. She does. She deserves a lot after all the shit she went through. But also that fucking kid got murdered. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he did. <laughs> all right. Well. What about this? What about, you know, people are disappointed with this movie, either on a meta level Mm -hmm. or for the characters themselves at the end of the movie. What is a movie that we can pair with it as a double feature to balance things out? I'll go ahead and go Uh just because Nathan, I watched this on your recommendation. (laughs) I think you could skip the first one and go run into Maniac Cop 2. Yeah. Because it's more fun than this movie, a similar plot. But it goes balls to the wall with how crazy it is. And you'll definitely. And it has a rap song over the credits. Yeah. There's there's one of those. It's so good. Yeah, we, we were still doing that. And uh, I think that movie came out in 1990, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Plus, Bruce Campbell's in it yeah. for a little bit. That's fun. So, what about you, Nathan? Um, I would recommend another movie in which a loner drives around a motorcycle and fights his parents. Hot Rod. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I like that. Mally? Uh, I've recommended this movie countless times on this podcast, but, and I think I did it for Halloween and Halloween Kills, but you know what it is, Gone in 60 Seconds, baby! <laughs> I had a feeling, I had, a, I put down Armageddon originally, just so I, because uh, you get to see Will Patton do something. Right. But, yeah, no, Gone in 60 Seconds, that's a good choice, too. Great choice. Uh, JT? Um, I always forget this part, but, uh, I'm gonna say- <laughs> you been on, like, six times. I know. <laughs> This is just one that I watched just recently and I really enjoyed. It was a Bullet Train. Oh, right okay. Is that worth oh, it? Oh, actually, Bullet Train was so much fun. Uh, I, I haven't seen it yet. It was. Uh, I enjoyed it. All right. It's it's smoking aces on a train. Oh, I'm women. In. Yeah. It's so much fun. Um. Also, uh, because this was kind of technically my pick me up. Uh-huh. Uh I watched the thing with an actual audience. Yeah. Uh, and it's that's a fucking experience. I that bet. movie's so much funnier with other people. Yeah. I bet. I saw that on the big screen last month and it was, yeah, it was a blast. Yeah. Nice. 
Well, guys, one last thing before we get into the the wrap up here. Best kill. Oh, sure. What do you guys got? Uh, I I still go with the DJ. Okay. I think the tongue is such a good bit, like making the record skip. Okay, it's hard to watch though. Holy yeah, shit! It is. JT, I'm gonna go with the uh, band kid. Which one? The, the blowtorch. blowtorch. The yeah, blowtorch. That's my favorite. It's brutal. It's rough. Even like we don't see it. I, my imagination fills in the blanks, mm-hmm. and it's rough. Uh, Mally? <laughs> the child. Yeah, I'm feeling. <laughs> God damn it, it's funny. That kid bounces so fucking hard like oh it's a trampoline God. off that floor. <laughs> that dummy. Dude. Oh, so oh, I, I forgot to mention this. I didn't see that the first time I saw the movie oh, because boy, he oh. bounces. I had to I didn't see it till I watched it on Peacock, but I, I missed that because there were two screaming yeah, toddlers in my us. screening yeah. of Halloween ends. Yeah. Insane. You should have walked up to their mom afterwards and be like, You want to find out if your fucking kids bounce too? Yeah. <laughs> audience, audience, don't do that. That, no. Do not threaten children in public. <laughs> threaten the parents of the children. Don't threaten the children themselves. It's all fun and games at the, here at the Silver Lightings playlist, <laughs> but do not bounce a child. Every horror movie I've seen this year has been like that. There were three kids in Barbarian. Jeez, like, it was fucking crazy. Yeah, no, my, my screening for Barbarian had children, too. Jeez. <laughs> Me and Priscilla had a theater to ourselves for Barbarian. It was pretty fucking cool. Nice. <laughs> yeah, same. <laughs> nice. You pull the uh, hole in the popcorn. <laughs> Yes. How are you supposed to eat the popcorn if it's falling out the bottom? <laughs> Mally, I was by myself. So, yes, I did. <laughs> yeah, JT's not a peanut butter guy. He's just the popcorn butter guy. That's my guy. He's an extra butter kind of guy. <laughs> it was caramel corn. That's, <laughs> That's sticky. That's Halloween ends. Uh, I know pr- probably people that listen to this are going to have a different opinion, and that's fine. If you like this movie, I don't care. <laughs> like it. Like it if you want. I'm not going to tell anybody they shan't see it or they shouldn't, mm-hmm. but it is what it is. It speaks for itself. If you like it, you like it. I don't care. <laughs> but, but. I'll fucking fight you. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> if you like this movie, then fuck you. If you want to, if you want to meet me in the streets and tell me about, no. But if you uh, do want to get your thoughts across. Meet me in the streets. <laughs> you want to meet me at the top of a staircase. <laughs> I don't think that would work. So I don't think you can just jut that shit in. Jesus. But if you do want to have your, uh, your, your thoughts heard, you can email us at the silver linings playlist at gmail.com. Or you can DM us over on Instagram or Twitter. Uh, or you can check us out on our subreddit, reddit.com slash r slash silver linings playlist. If you haven't already, subscribe, rate, feedback, all the good podcast roundup stuff. And uh, yeah, that's, guys, that's the end of Spooky Linings. We did it. I'm sad we kind of went out on, on a bummer. <laughs> yeah. Speak for your goddamn self. <laughs> <laughs> Mally was here for half the Spooky Linings. He's like, oh boy, <laughs> fucking tired. I'm exhausted. Well, that that's okay, because the, the show keeps rolling. Mm-hmm. We've got another movie next week. We're into November, um, and Mally, I think this is your pick as well, back to back. Oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why don't you give us a clue for what we're talking about next week? Um, All I'll say is that we'll be back next week, or versions of us will be back next week. <laughs> Did you say versions of us? Yeah, that we totally will. A couple of us will be. Yeah, <laughs> Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> well... Halloween Eds, and so does the spooky linings and this episode, which mm. has gone on too long uh, for my taste. But JC, thanks for coming back. Uh, we'll see you again if we ever do another Halloween movie. I can. I like other movies. No, no, you don't. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, sorry. And also, we're never doing the original, so don't hold your breath. Uh, okay, I wasn't. <laughs> No, thank you for coming back on. It was insightful. Yeah. Actually, you know what, JT? Hold your breath until we do the original. <laughs> for four years, like Michael down in the sewers and just hope someone brings rats to you. <laughs> I mean, you know Corey was holding his breath the whole time he was wearing that mask. <laughs> yeah, you do. God. Stankin'. Jesus. Well, um, first of all, rest in peace, Oatmeal. Second of all, we got to say rest in peace, Donald Pleasant. We got to. We got to. We must. And, Dude, uh, you got to. <laughs> and as always... You don't fuck with Doug Mullaney. Don't try that Halloween shit with me. (laughs) (laughs) XO, XO, gossip girl. (laughs) Excelsior. 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 Look it up.
Hello YouTube! If you've made it this far, thanks! Could you do us one more favor? Could you hit those like and subscribe buttons? Maybe leave us a comment on what you think of the show. We'd really appreciate it. Join us again next week for an all new episode. Bye!